Hi, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon uh, for everybody. We are so excited to be live uh, doing our first Ariathon. Uh, this idea um, came to our team uh, from, uh, I don't know if any of you remember, uh, the Golden Girls. Uh, they used to do a telethon to fundraise for um, all of the people in Florida. So I thought this would be a great idea taking from that, um, from that episode in particular from the Golden Girls to do a fundraiser for many singers uh, that are suffering from consequences from COVID-19. Um, a lot of us have lost jobs this year. A lot of us have had gig cancellations. And I know that um, these 24 um, singers are also you know, welcoming the idea to be able to fundraise for themselves and for other organizations. So um, we are excited to be able to do this. I want to uh, kind of state uh, uh, fair warning for everybody. At some point, technology always has uh, the, the, the opportunity to go uh, array and uh, something might collapse, something uh, we might go offline for a second uh, because of a technical difficulty, but we will be back. So just hang around, stay, and we will be back. Um, we will be going singer by singer, introducing them, um, one at a time, they will be checking in with us via Zoom and you'll be able to see them and hear them introduce their arias. Uh, then we will play their videos and uh, we will come back and touch base with all of you. I want to point out that you can always uh, donate. You can donate during the entire event. It doesn't have to be necessarily while a certain singer is singing. Uh, we have ways through our website um, under the Ariathon tab to be able to donate through Vendini. Uh, and 100% of that money goes to our singers. Opera Steamboat is doing 100% of this for the singers that are participating. So the more you donate, if your friends are singing, the more money they will get. And I hope you remember that uh, throughout this entire event, that it's not... Um, about fundraising for our opera company is our opera company doing the most we can to support singers um, uh, at this time of need. Um, so um, I will introduce our first singer of the afternoon, morning, wherever you are. Some of our singers are all the way from Berlin. So uh, evening to uh, Germany. Um, we are excited to welcome our first singer, a dear friend, and a tech-savvy human being that has uh, helped us so much. We could not be doing this without him. So I hope that you thank him for being able to do this Ariathon and have you enjoy all of these performances from, um, uh, from all over the world and throughout all afternoon and evening. Uh, our dear friend is Ben Gully Tenor, and he will be joining us now to perform a few arias that he will introduce himself. So, welcome, Ben. Yay! Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Long walk. Long walk in. Hi, thanks for having me. Yet again, back in the living room. These are our new concert halls of the new age. So, I just want to say, I was looking at the screen, thank you guys for showing up. Hi, all the way to Egypt all around the world. It's so cool and super cheesy, but man, uh, music is one of those unifiers that can bring us all together. So uh, what better than to do some happy arias? This first one's kind of one of the standard ways to start, but since uh, some people are probably still waking up or not, this, uh, this is one of the, the, the more upbeat tenor arias in the repertoire. A lot of people here hear me sing it, so if you know it, sing along with me at home. This is La Donna Immobile from Verdi's Rigoletto. <coughs> Ehi, 
It's a warm-up, too. That was a good one. We've been, we've been doing some tech runs this morning. Yeah. So we're we're um, already sweating in the corner over here. By the way, this is performance on, like, three hours of sleep. Shush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not, you're not supposed to tell that, mate. You didn't hear that, Robert. <laughs> um, so, so yeah. So, you know, Andres and I actually got the wonderful fortune of back on May 3rd. We uh, made our recital debut with the Dallas Opera together. Uh, and we only had 30 minutes then. And we wanted to do some more arias for that show. But this is when we really wanted to program... Uh, and a big shout out to my uh, undergraduate and graduate mentor, Dale Morehouse, who showed me this aria. I think it's maybe one of my favorite, like, you know, painful, angsty opera arias for the tenor in the whole repertoire. And it's right at that, you know, verismo period where you get to really, you got to make the sound cry too. So this is Lamento di Federico, Frederick's Lament from La Lezeana. And you can say you're welcome because it's the best three and a half minutes from the whole two hour opera. So you're welcome. <laughs> So I want 
They're just as cheesy then when they were written as they are now and in these big moments. I may, oh, alas. Yeah, anyway, I always Dramatic. think that I love the words in Strauss's Zweignung, but Haba Donk, that's just as cheesy as us like walking up to each other and being like, have thanks, have thanks. Yeah. But truly, Haba Donk, everybody. I have, I have Haba Donk for, uh, I have Haba Donk, yeah, Haba Donk for, uh, for you, man. Thanks. If there was an audience, I'd make you clap for Andre. So at home, clap oh, for Maestro. No, no, no. Thank you, Ben, for... Amazing things you have done for us today. Well, uh, uh, you know, and gotta keep singing, gotta keep the songs absolutely, going. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and we'll have to do a repeat of either La Boheme or um, Rusalka. Yeah. There's so Rusalka, yeah, there's so many I want to do. Um, and then, you know, we were supposed to, Ben and I were supposed to do the summer uh, Ariadne of Taxos uh, in Steamboat. Uh, but that has been rescheduled, and we will be performing that in two years, in 2022. Yeah, Next yeah. year, uh, we will have, we already have plans. We will be doing the uh, premiere of our opera, Cookie, uh, that we commissioned thanks to Opera America. And uh, the composer is Brianna Kirchhoff from Denver, and Rachel Peters is a librettist from New York. So very excited about yeah. that. And then we'll do we'll be doing some Mozart in addition to that for the summer of 2021. Sweet. But um, 2022, Ariadne with Bengali, get ready for it. Bacchus, if anybody needs a Bacchus before then. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this this piece, uh, so I'd already said uh, have a donk, but I, I have a big donk to Dale Morehouse that I mentioned who kind of walked me through and molded me into the tenor that, I, that I've become. Uh, but before Dale Morehouse at UMKC, there was a man named Michael Cousins, which uh, some of the older regime know. He was one of the greatest American tenors of all time, um, sang everywhere all over the world, and was at UMKC. And I got fortunate uh, when I first started studying. He was my first teacher at the conservatory. And, oh, I'm going to get weepy. He's not with us. He passed away a few years ago. Um, but uh, he joked that I was going to be a tenor one day, and that one day I'd get to sing this in Dorma. And so I'll never forget... I sang this in Dorma, posted that there's a video of me when I was 23 online. It's not great. It's 23-year-old Green Ben, but it's Green Ben singing this in Dorma from his heart. And uh, I got a message from Michael online saying that he had seen it and that he was crying and was so proud and knew that even then, blah, blah, blah. So some of the stages I've been on, whether it's Carnegie Hall or the Corn Palace, I take you all with me. So I say that because this song is softly as in a morning sunrise. This is from Sigmund Ronberg's operetta, New Moon. It is amazing. I love the show. Somebody please do a production of it ASAP. But this aria is so good. And Michael Cousins is his name. Look it up. It's the production of a New York City opera that Beverly Sills produced. He was the Chevalier, or not the Chevalier, he was, the, he was this role. And it's absolutely amazing. Softly is in the morning sunrise. Michael Cousins, you're going to hear Ben Gully and Andres Claderas now. <laughs> Sweet surrender, love came to me. 
Check out Michael Cousins. Mwah! Opera Steamboat, a huge thank you to them. We're going to be around the rest of the day. Thank you for supporting. I'm going to go take off my jacket and wipe my brow and start calling the action from over there. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Thank you, guys. Please donate today, too. The bit.ly link is on the YouTube, YouTube site, on the website, and also on, on, Facebook. on Facebook. So mwah. thank you, guys. Andres. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I'll let the host be the host. Mwah. We are so excited to uh, be doing this event, as I mentioned to you guys before, um, to everybody, this um, was an idea that came um, about a month ago, uh, and we started to kind of figure out how we were able to do it and uh, get singers to join us um, from all over the country, all over the world, actually. Um, and um, we are so excited to have 24 fabulous singers uh, from uh, from different um, uh, sort of parts of the country, uh, different backgrounds, uh, different styles of singing, um, uh, different training with different experiences throughout. Um, we, um, we wanted to make sure that we were uh, showcasing a, a varied and diverse um, showcasing of singers from all over the country and the world. Um, we are, I think, we are going to be, you're going to see this lovely earpiece that I have um, that is part of our technology in order for us to be able to connect with our first singer, uh, who is Stephanie Ball. And um, Stephanie Ball is going to be joining us from uh, Zoom. And we, I believe, we are going to go to her once I see a little signal from Ben that tells me that we are connected with uh, Stephanie. Stephanie, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> this is amazing. I think I just shed a tear because, um, as you can attest, 
um, technology uh, and musicians are not not always <laughs> there's hey not now. always that energy synergy. <laughs> but, uh, uh, we are this so has been a learning curve <laughs> for a lot of us. Yeah. So Stephanie, tell us a little bit about yourself um, and the um, the selections that you chose for us today. Yes, of course, absolutely. So my name is Stephanie Ann Ball. I am based in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I'm a Lyric Coloratura soprano. So I, first of all, thank you for having me be a part of this. I was so pleased <laughs> to get the invitation Our to pleasure. participate, and I just think it's wonderful that you put this together. So thank you again for that. And I have chosen a unique assortment of pieces for you today. I wanted to include one of my favorite arias, but also given everything that's going on in the world at the time, I thought it would be nice to include some art songs, some spirituals, and a very special jazz piece for you. So I have five pieces that you'll be hearing. The first is Love Let the Wind Cry by Undine Smith Moore, and she is one of the most prolific African-American woman composers. Her oh. repertoire that she has created is extraordinary, and this is one of my favorite vocal solos of hers. Um, another spiritual that's dear, near and dear to my heart is Deep River, and I've chosen the H.T. Berlay arrangement for you today. Um, after that, one of the you know operatic greatest hits, Quando Men Vo from Puccini's La Boheme that Everyone loves. Wow. <laughs> and if you're not familiar with that piece, it's uh, Musetta's big aria that she sings where she shows up at Cafe Mamuse and she makes a whole big deal about how wonderful and beautiful she is, specifically to get uh, Marcello's attention. Wonderful. And after that, um, we do a bit of a transition to the jazz world. And I wanted to sing Strange Fruit for you. And that is a piece by Abel Mirapol that's been made famous by the great Billie Holiday. And that song is particularly poignant because it is one of the first really fabulous protest songs that is specifically addresses the problem with lynching in the United States. Wonderful. So you'll hear some interesting language and some parallels about uh, the difficult times in the South, but I really hope that you enjoy it and you find some meaning in it today. And then I ended with My God is So High, which is another one of my favorite African-American spirituals, and I chose the Hall Johnson arrangement for you. That's fabulous, Stephanie. I, I, I had to um, just, when you mentioned singing D Deep River, um, I still remember as a kid the first time that I saw the um, original production they did um, with Kathleen Battle and Jesse Norman of Spirituals. Yeah. Um, and it was the Met Orchestra doing that. And I still remember, uh, if I close my eyes, I still remember Jesse Norman singing that right next to the organ on stage. And it was such a, a special experience for me. I, I, a little boy from Uruguay, um, I loved spirituals since I was four years old. Don't yeah. ask me why, but I had a fascination with the um, with those songs. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I used to listen to them in a little uh, record player, uh, walk around the house listening to spirituals. Mm -hmm. uh, but so that um, I'm so happy that you will be performing that for us today. Oh, thank and you. I think without further ado, we will go to the videos and enjoy these uh, 12 minutes and 30 seconds of incredible music. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, 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 
Fabulous performance. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for joining us today um, during our first Ariathon. I just want to mention um, ways that you can donate to these fabulous artists today. You can go to our website um, on the tab under events um, and um, you can go there, click on donate, um, and directly it takes you to our Vendini. There's also a bit.ly uh, link that you can use to be able to donate. But I believe, I believe, if I am getting the right signal from then, that we have Benjamin Lee all the way from Germany. Hi, Ben. Hi. How are you doing? Doing well. How are you guys? We are, are you? great, Hi, trying to um, check along and enjoying all of your performances. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Ben. Sure, I'm from Los Angeles, California, but I live currently in uh, Magdeburg, Germany, which is about an hour and a half west of Berlin. Um, and I work here at the theater. This is my second year, and um, we've actually are in the process of opening things back up, back up, and the theater back up. So it's been weird, but you know, just. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm sure um, what I have heard is a lot of theaters are doing um, uh, observing distancing, but they are doing live performances. What is that like, if you don't mind telling us a little bit? It's a little strange. We had the dress rehearsal today. We actually have a performance tomorrow. And our dress rehearsal today, we have a, like, a, like a red line we can't cross. And when we, came, when we come out, we, can't, we have to come out uh, staggered one by one. And... Um, it's been a little strange. The audience is also very sparsely spread apart in very strategic, very, you know, a calculated way. And um, yeah, but otherwise, it's it's nice to finally sing for people and perform for people because uh, it's been it's been you know it's tough on everybody. So right, I, I am sure that um, it's a challenge. It's been a challenge, I think, for all of us to be able to. Um, well, it's a, it was a realization, I think. Um, that uh, how, how needed it is that comfort of, of having an audience live responding to your singing, responding to your performing is really crucial, essential to uh, performers. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, the arias that we're going to be hearing today. Sure. So um, I'm singing three arias and a couple uh, songs from Schumann. Uh, one of the arias is um, from Mozart's, uh, Mozart's, uh, uh, was in English? Um, the Imperial uh, Vassim uh, Abduction from Seraglio. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, two of them, actually. One of them is the aria from Belmonte, and the aria is called Ich baue ganz auf deine Stärke, which is, uh, I, 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 I build everything on your uh, your strength. And he's, uh, it's um, the aria he sings before he goes to hatch the plan with Pedrio to rescue Constanze. And he's um, kind of psyching himself up and, and telling, singing to the, the, the idea of love that, that he, uh, he gets his strength from that and his, his drive from, from love. And then the uh, second aria is um, that I sing from the same opera. It's actually from the other character, Pedrillo. And that's Frisch zum Kampfe, and uh, to, to battle. And this is where Pedrillo has to, he's kind of a coward character-ish, if you want to call it that, uh, so to speak. Um, and he has to constantly uh, uh, side himself back up to at the end where he can finally say, no, let's do this. Let's, let's carry this crazy plan out that I, that I came up with. And 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 yeah, then he does. Um, then I'll, I also have the aria. It's called Le Jugement de Paris, uh, Paris's Judgment, so to speak. Um, it's from Offenbach's Belle Hélène, and this is the aria, the first aria of Paris of Troy, um, you know, from mythology. Mm -hmm. And this is where he goes and meets Calcas uh, after being sent with a letter from Venus. And in this aria, he tried, he explains to Calcas what it was like uh, having met these three goddesses who were. Uh, fighting among themselves in a forest, and they were trying to get him to give the the fabled apple to one of them. Um, 
based on their beauty or, 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 or what they thought that they uh, uh, um, deserved it for. And Paris is, uh, he quotes these three goddesses constantly. Each of these verses is one is a different goddesses, uh, what they say to him. And at the end, he's just saying, this is ridiculous. And then Venus comes out and he says, I was just starstruck. You know, she, it was clear that she, she, she won it. Um, and then the, Sh the Schumann songs, uh, just four of them from a set uh, of songs from, they're called the Kerner Lieder, K-E-R-N-E-R. There are 12 of them in total. Um, I am singing number one, number five, number 11, and number 12. Um, and yeah, that's fabulous, you enjoy. Fabulous. Um, so we are excited. Uh, ben and I actually were in the production of Frida um, by Robert Xavier Rodriguez uh, with Cincinnati Opera. So uh, uh, we haven't seen each other in a while, but it's so great to see you and to hear you. You sound amazing amazing <laughs> and i can't wait to do some rossini with you sometime in the near yes, future please uh, i think ben we are gonna go to uh, the performances and um, we will see you later great thank you ben thank you enjoy <laughs>
It was a fabulous performance. Um, I believe that we have our next singers on Zoom. Uh, as soon as I get a thumbs up, we will move on to talk to Danielle Lombardi. Hania, hello, Danielle, how are you? Good. Hello, Danielle. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I am great. Um, uh, thank you so much for joining us. I just wanted to give you a chance to um, tell us a little bit about uh, the pieces that you chose, the two, the two pieces that you chose for today. Yeah, so um, before I do that, my name is Danielle Lombardi, as Andres said. I'm a mezzo-soprano here in Denver, Colorado. Um, I'm going to be singing two pieces today. Uh, one is a Cerba Valuta from Adriana Le Couvre by Francesco Cilea. And I love this aria. It's like my yes. big girl aria. So <laughs> I'm really excited to sing it. Um, the plot is very confusing. Just in act one, the amount of characters that intercept letters and that meet each other, it's really convoluted. So if you get an afternoon to diagram it out so you can understand <laughs> it, I highly recommend. Um, but this aria comes at the top of act two and it's a verismo opera. So it has those really great thick textures and you'll notice in the aria there's about four different sections and um, the first one of course she's angry which you'll notice that right off the bat uh the second section she's hearing these sounds and she thinks it's her lover coming uh the third section you'll hear the texture change again um she is asking herself you know will he really come I don't, maybe he's regretting coming to meet me. And then the third section or the fourth section, she asks her lover to, uh, or the, the stars to guide her lover to her. So very verismo in scope. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And what is uh, the second piece that you're singing for us? Amour vient de ma faiblesse from Samson and Delilah. Um, also starts act two. Um, and what I love about this aria is it's total woman empowerment. And she said, I'm, she says, I'm going to put him in chains by the end of this. And she's being very deceptive and wants to overcome him. And it's really cool because as a mezzo, we get to end on a low A flat, which is cool because most arias end on a big high note and this ends on a nice low note. Right. Absolutely. Um, awesome. So we will, I believe, we will move forward to uh, hearing the arias. Uh, but it's so great Perfect. to see you, Danielle. I haven't seen you in a bit, uh, but it uh, it's fabulous to see you and hear you sing. You sound amazing, and I love uh, this big repertoire that you're singing now. Um, I thoroughly encourage it. So I hope that everybody enjoys the performances by mezzo soprano Danielle Lombardi. Thanks, Andres. Bye.
Danielle, that was beautiful, beautiful performance. Uh, uh, we, um, I just wanted to take a little bit of time uh, while we introduce, before we introduce our next singer, to tell you a little bit about Upper Steamboat. Upper Steamboat uh, is a um, small company in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. I have had the privilege to be the artistic director for the past five and a half years. And we generally do our Young Artist Program every summer for four weeks. In Steamboat, we bring young artists from all over the country. Uh, and we have had uh, artists from Japan, uh, from India, from all over the world as well. Uh, and we, we give opportunities to young artists to be able to not only get training, but also do entire roles um, uh, that sometimes it's difficult to get opportunities to do that in college or even in graduate school. Um, it's a wonderful program that we do every year and uh, we hold our auditions in New York, in Boston, in Chicago, and, uh, uh, and we select the best artists that we, we receive applications from. Um, I also want to tell you a little bit about our Opera in the Schools program. We do a wonderful Opera in the Schools program where we um, bring live opera, an, an entire opera, to operas, uh, to schools in the Route County area um, around Steamboat Springs. And we see tons and tons of students uh, that is their first uh, time hearing an opera and getting to experience. Uh, this year we had to postpone our performance um, of uh, Frida Kahlo and the Bravest Girl in the World, uh, but we will be doing that next year with, um, with our schools as well. Um, <clears throat> this is a great opportunity, Ariathon, to showcase 24 incredible artists from all over the world uh, joining us to perform, to raise funds for themselves. You know, uh, again, 100% of the money raised today and I was just checking my phone, the donations are rolling in and it's fabulous to see that. So keep that coming uh, because our young artists, our artists that are singing today uh, need your support in this time of need for themselves. Uh, so if you're a friend, if you're a colleague, if you are a parent, um, help us out, help them uh, fundraise for, uh, for themselves to support uh, their art and their passion. Um, I also wanted to mention we are very proud to um, <clears throat> uh, announce that for the first time we are receiving this year our National Endowment for the Arts Award. Uh, <laughs> hi, Ben. Um, we, um, we worked really uh, hard to make sure that that happened this year. We have had great growth in the past five years. Uh, this organization is um, started uh, with um, a, a wonderful singer from, from Steamboat, but the majority of the work in the last 10 years has been done by the former president of our board, Jack Dysart. Uh, so thank you, Jack, for all of your efforts and incredible things you have done for the organization. Our entire board is really an amazing group of people. Our president, uh, Jenny Maxwell, and our vice chair, uh, Melissa Hampton, Incredible people as well do so much for our organization, helping us fundraise and actually keeping this organization thriving. So when we receive such acknowledgement like we receive from the National Endowment for the Arts, it's, it's a great kudos to an or, and a small organization that is resilient. So we are going to move to our next singer, and I believe Eric McConnell is here on Zoom and ready to chat. Hi, Eric! Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> great, how are you? Doing great. Uh, yeah, just I've actually been traveling this whole last week. Uh, very socially distant, of course. Uh, so I'm actually coming at you from Omaha, Nebraska uh, oh. right now. Just got to my hotel like 20 minutes ago, so perfect timing. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That's yeah. great. So, um, Eric, tell us a little bit about what we will be hearing today. Absolutely. So I, I'm offering three arias of very contrasting styles. Uh, the first is La Calunia from uh, Rossini's Barber of Seville. Uh, in this aria, Don Basilio, who is a, a pretty shady character slash music <laughs> teacher, 
uh, is talking to Bartolo, who is, of course, very concerned that Alma Viva is in town, and Alma Viva is a uh, known admirer of Bartolo's uh, ward, Rosina. And Bartolo, of course, wants Rosina for himself, so Basilio concocts this plan uh, to create a rumor, La Colonia means a rumor, about the Count, and uh, destroy his reputation and run him out of town. And of course, right after the aria, Bartolo says, you know what, I'm going to try something else. But, you know, it, he gives it a good college try. <laughs> um, uh, the next aria is a hard contrast. Uh, uh, it is from Verdi's uh, Don Carlo, which happens to be my absolute favorite opera. This is King Philip's aria from the fourth act of that opera, Ella Jamai Mamo. Uh, also a shady character, but in a much different way. He is the king of Spain during the Spanish Inquisition, so not a, not a historically well-remembered person. Uh, but he actually has a very sympathetic moment uh, where he is realizing that his wife, the queen, uh, who is Elizabeth, of, uh, who came to him from France, is not in love with him. Uh, and he is finally realized, he comes to realize this at the beginning of the fourth act. It opens up with this aria, which is considered by many the best bass baritone aria in existence. So that's why I wanted to bring it out for you guys. Um, and then the third needs no introduction. It is the Toreador aria, uh, Votre Toast from Carmen. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. It's Escamillo's entrance. He is in town. He's here to take names and kick butt. Uh, and uh, that's what he does during the aria. He's describing what it's like to be a Toreador. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so, and I'm accompanying myself in these piece, in these videos, uh, so Amazing. please, pianist friends, please be very kind, because <laughs> I am not at your level, uh, did a lot of simplification, uh, but I, I was a pianist for several years before I turned to singing, so that seemed like a, this seemed like a good time to bring that back out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and how, how does it, um, uh, how, how is it different for you to, you know, just focus on your singer or, or having to accompany yourself. Is that? It's actually in many ways. I found while I was recording these videos specifically, I found that I had an easier time singing really well because I was, my hands were busy. I wasn't thinking about, <laughs> you know, oh God, do I do a gesture here? Do I do something? I, I like had a little more vocal freedom than I actually would if I weren't accompanying myself. Right. So it was, it was a fun little experiment. And I've done a little bit of stuff like that uh, on projects on my own uh, throughout the whole quarantine pandemic situation uh, yeah, so it was a, a good chance to flex that skill that I haven't had to flex in a while <laughs> absolutely and you know I several um, singer friends have mentioned that sometimes accompanying yourself actually helps um, tame the demons as a singer that as you're you're singing you're you know judging and when you're doing multiple things like playing the piano and singing at the same time, you don't have time to worry about other things or overthink Absolutely. so much. <laughs> Just, uh, you're on overload working on- Yeah, on it, it helps hand. to turn your brain off. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, or at least refocus your brain on some other tasks so that way the voice frees, frees itself up. And obviously I could never, you know, perform in an opera, you know, live in this way, unless it was a very specific role. Uh, Basilio actually could maybe work out. Um, but yeah, it was a fun little experiment. And I'm, I'm, thank you so much to you and Opera Steamboat for this wonderful opportunity yeah, uh, for us and, to make uh, art in, uh, in a remote situation. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we hope that you encourage your friends. I'm sure all of your friends and colleagues are watching. We want to encourage them to continue donating my yes. phone. I receive messages every time somebody donates. And I had to turn it off because <laughs> it was going Amazing. off. Amazing. So it's exciting to, to see that. It, you know, I'm going back to the selections that, that you chose for today. There's a certain Spanish theme throughout all, all yes, three of them. Yes, there is. And so, I, I realized that as I was doing I was like, oh, okay. Was that this intentional? Is stuff taking place in Spain. It's just the, the most operatic country, despite the fact that there are no operas from that were composed by Spanish composers. At least no, like, really well known in the, in the canon. Right. Fun little irony that I enjoy. Lots of lots of sarsuela from from Spain. You know, I, I grew up mm -hmm. my my mom. The, probably the first uh, type of music that I heard because uh, my mom, uh, when she sang, she really enjoyed singing sarsuela. So um, it's dear to my heart. And I hope someday it uh, picks up in the U.S. and we have more more performances of sarsuela. Yeah, I, I love it too. I actually went, my undergrad was at the University of Miami. And oh. Miami, of course, has a 
large Spanish speaking community. And uh, I actually did get to hear quite a bit of Zarzuela while I was there. And that was actually really cool because I was like, what? They do this? <laughs> this is an option? It, it, so I'm hoping it makes a comeback. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, Eric, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are super excited uh, that you uh, chose to participate in this event. We're really excited about the event and um, we are happy to support all of the artists that are performing today. So we thank you from the bottom of our heart for being part of it. And I believe we are going to go to the videos. So thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes.
dem blood freezing cold. Il mio crimi angoli di che qui di Francia venne.
so much Eric that was a beautiful performance and kudos on singing and playing the piano at the same time um, it's uh, it's awesome to hear you um, I think we are set to move to the next singer not yet um, so okay. let me tell you a little bit about um, our uh, opera that we commission thanks to Opera America uh, an opera based on the life events of the life of Cookie Lockhart, who um, was the first female auctioneer to be inducted into the Auctioneers Hall of Fame. Cookie Lockhart is actually from Steamboat, uh, and she might be watching now. Hi, Cookie. Hope you're doing well. Um, we have fabulous librettist Rachel Peters uh, writing the libretto of this piece, and Liana Kirchhoff, uh, who is writing the music. Um, she is uh, from Denver. So if you want to check out uh, a little bit more, learn a little bit more about Cookie, the opera, uh, go to our website. We have plenty of information there. We have uh, our next singer, Christina Hazen. I'm so excited to see her. I'm a humongous <laughs> fan of Christina Hazen. So uh, Christina, tell us, how are you doing? Hi, Andres. How are you? I'm, I'm great. So good to see you. Um, I'm doing good, you know, just kind of hanging in there, taking it one day at a time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm sure we all are. So. Yeah, yeah, and you're in Cincinnati right now, right? Yeah, Cincinnati right now. And actually, today is my birthday. So. <gasps> oh, happy birthday! Happy of course, birthday! I knew this. Happy birthday! Yeah, it's it's like wild. I'm like, oh my gosh, I get to do a fun thing. 
texting with people, you know, virtually. Aww. So like, well, I, I, yeah. thank ben you. Ben and I are sending you from St. John, Indiana, a big virtual hug Aww. on your happy Aww. birthday. And happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Christina, tell us a little bit about what, uh, what arias you chose, what exciting things we're going to hear from you. Okay. So, um, I chose to do quite a bit of different things. So first, um, I wanted to do the Segadia from Carmen. That's classic. You know, everybody knows it. Um, uh, and then, uh, I wanted to do this aria from flight. It's called the suitcase aria. Basically, um, the main character, she's very pregnant. She actually has a baby later on in the show, but she's stuck at an airport. Her husband actually got on a flight without her because she got you know, freaked out to fly because she's, again, she's very pregnant. And um, so the aria is just kind of her just looking back at how her life has changed and kind of this existential moment for her. Uh, it's written by Jonathan Dove. It's like a new opera that was composed in the 90s. It's kind of getting more popular in recent years. But, so I really love that aria. And then uh, I'm singing a Handel aria from the show Partenope, which we did at CCM back in February. Um, the show is super kind of random and fun, but we had a lot of fun with it. Um, the, my character was Mira, uh, dresses up as a man to go find her lost love, essentially. Finds out he's been cheating on her, essentially, like courting this queen, trying to like raise his status. So she, and this aria is just kind of rage just super mad at him for that and then um i chose to do to end with two dvorak songs from his siganska melody um the first one is um, songs my mother taught me which is a very popular tune um it's just a gorgeous melody that um basically the words are um, when my mom used to teach me how to sing and play the piano she used to cry and now when i sing and teach other kids to play the piano i sing and cry it's just kind of like mm -hmm. the circle of life thing yeah. and um the last song is my song rings out and this song is just talks about like my song rings out with love when there's a storm when i'm far away when this person i love has died like it's just this song of resilience and i thought it would be perfect to end you know especially in this time when we're all having to learn how resilient we all can be you know absolutely couldn't agree with you more um resilience is really important right now and finding what's at the core of us as human beings really um well i, I believe ben is ready to go with the videos uh so we can hear your beautiful singing and uh, thank birthday, you for joining birthday. us and <laughs> happy birthday christina hazen <laughs> Love you guys so much. Also, donate to them. They're amazing. <laughs> amazing yes. company. No, donate to all of you us, to support. All don, <laughs> donate to yes. support all of the beautiful singers that are performing today. Yes. Bye. Happy Bye. birthday. Bye. Thank you. 
Reducing 
Hi, thank you so much, uh, Christina. That was a beautiful performance. Uh, we really enjoyed it. It's a, always a wonderful instrument. I really love hearing your voice. Um, our, um, our opera company has been um, really trying to think outside of the box on how to support uh, our artists. We were fortunate to be able to, uh, because of the rescheduling uh, of the summer, we were able to um, pay our artists um, that had signed contracts 25% uh, of their fee um, and we really felt that that was the minimum that we could do um, in, in times in hard times uh, but we wanted to go ahead and do more for artists and that's the idea that we came up with this is the idea that we had Ariathon to be able to have collaboratively amongst 24 uh, singers to be able to fundraise for themselves, to be able to offer some music uh, in a time when I think people need music to lift their hearts and to feel connected with each other. And this is a great opportunity for people to join in, chat, uh, be able to hear their colleagues, their friends, their family members, and be able to donate to support them. So I encourage you, um, we have in our chat our bit.ly, uh, link you can click on it and it takes you directly to Vendini to um, right below no over here over here right here you see it um, and you can copy that and go to it and be able to donate um, are we ready to chat with Albert uh, hi Albert how are you doing Can you hear me, Albert? I can. I can. Can oh, you hear me? Oh, fabulous. Oh, wait. Let me speak a little higher. I'm talking to a tenor now. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? So great to join I'm, you. I'm well. I'm well. I'm well. How are you? I am doing great. We're so happy to have you here and be able to um, hear you sing. So, Albert, tell us a little bit about uh, the pieces that we're going to hear today and a uh, little bit about yourself. 
Awesome. Uh, sure. So I'll start with me. I am originally from New Haven, Connecticut. Um, I currently am based in Reno, Nevada, um, and still singing um, full time and teaching and and making music and making art in all sorts of different ways. It's been pretty interesting, even during this time of craziness and upheaval. I have been able to engage vocally with in a few different ways. Just did a a virtual ensemble recording for the opening of the Nats convention a couple of weeks. I sing with the American Spiritual Ensemble. There's this today. Um, one of the selections that I posted while not being an aria, I thought was appropriate for this time and, and some of the dangers we've talked about. We've heard about transmission with singing specifically. And um, so that first selection, How Can I Keep From Singing, is really just um, my own my own heart in this moment that no matter what, we have to continue singing. Um, I sing a bunch of different stuff, a um, bunch of different rep, uh, including you know all of the standards. The other selection that is on there is um, Si Ritrovarla from Rossini's Cenerentola. Um, I did a full production of it a few years back, and it's just a um, the recit and aria um, from Act Two of Cenerentola. Um, and I don't know if we got the technical glitch worked out with Una Portiva, but if that did get worked out, then it's then then the other selection is is the very famous Una Portiva Lagrima from L'Elysir d'Amore. That's wonderful. Yes, we do. We have all three um, uh, selections, awesome. so we're super excited. Um, tell us a little bit about um, the ensemble that you just performed with. So, so the American Spiritual Ensemble. Um, is a, a group that was originated and originally based in Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky. Um, it was founded by Dr. Everett McCorvey, who was the head of the voice and opera program at the University of Kentucky. And he formed this group to preserve the performance practice of Negro spirituals. And so the group has been around for 25 years doing performances. And we, the group will be, the ensemble will be opening where we were supposed to be doing a full concert for the um, National Association of Teachers of Singing National Conference in Knoxville, Tennessee. But of course it was canceled. The conference is going to be online. And so what we did was got together to do a virtual ensemble of one selection um, for the conference. So we just did that. That is fabulous. I, I was telling Stephanie a little while ago when her spot came up that uh, this little boy from Uruguay loved spirituals since the time I was like three or four years old. I was, uh, I had records and I kept on listening to spirituals. Uh, and I, I still don't know where I heard uh, spiritual the first time that I became a huge fan. But I, I do remember the first time that I saw later on um, Jesse Norman and Kathleen Battle uh, doing yes. a style of, from, the, from, from Carnegie Hall that was incredible. But um, we are excited that you are here. We're excited to hear you. And again, encourage everybody to continue supporting our artists. This is our opportunity, what we're doing to be able to um, help uh, artists raise funds to support themselves through these tricky times. But um, Albert, let's go hear you sing uh, and enjoy your performance. Thank you for joining us today. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. My life flows on in endless song above its lamentation. I hear the sweet, though far off hymn that hails a new. Die 
The Lord my Saviour liveth. What though the darkness gather round, songs in the night God giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm. While to that refuge clinging, since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? I lift mine eyes, the clouds grow thin, I see the blue above it, and day by day this pathway smooths, since first I learned to love it. The peace of Christ makes fresh my soul, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am God's. How can I keep from seeing? Oh, <laughs> 
domanderemo, 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 ricercheremo, ritroveremo, ricercheremo, ritroveremo, non voleremo, domanderemo, 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 ricercheremo, ritroveremo, sì, sì. Tu sei speranza, freddo di muore, e in tuo mio cuore stanno a pugnare. Oh, oh, oh. 
Beautiful performance. I just love hearing some Rossini, and I definitely love Una Fortiva Lagrima. Um, I think I always make a joke that there are certain pieces like um, Cuando Me Vo or um, uh, Una Fortiva Lagrima. If you have heard some commercials or been in an elevator, uh, you have heard those songs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we are excited to be doing this project. It's Ariathon, and hopefully will be the first of many. Thank you so much. Um, as I mentioned before, my phone is going off like crazy with um, donations that are coming in. I encourage you to continue donating. You can go to our website uh, at our Ariathon page and donate from there. They take you directly to Vendini, and you can donate there's also this lovely uh, mo uh, YouTube, not YouTube, this link right here that takes you to Bitly. <laughs> I can't even speak anymore. It's only two and a half hours in. Six more hours. Uh, we we uh, encourage you to donate to the artists that are participating in our Ariathon today um, because, you know, like here at Opera Simba, we want to support our artists and uh, we hope that you will join us in supporting the artists that are performing with us today. Um, well, let's actually try to connect with our next singer, <coughs> Susanna Thornton. Uh, Susanna, can you hear me? I can hear you, Andres. Yay, Hello. It's so great <laughs> to see you and hear you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's so nice to see you again. <laughs> I know. It's great to see you too. And thank you for joining us today and preparing uh, a performance for all of your friends and all of the fans of Opera Simbo. Tell us a little bit about um, where you're calling us today from uh -huh. and um, also the selections that you chose for today. Sure thing. Well, I'm calling in from just a little bit south of Boston, Massachusetts today and beautiful summer day here. Just got back from hiking. Um, I was really excited to prepare my selections. It's been kind of, as we've all felt, a little bit of a musically difficult time for many people. And it just gave me so much joy to put together these five pieces. I have three arias, the Segadia from Carmen by Bizet, Fête Louis Mes Aveux, Cybelle's aria from Gounod's Faust, and Must the Winter Come So Soon um, from Barber's Vanessa, as well as two American art songs, one by... Richard Hundley called Come Ready and See Me, which for me is a great favorite of mine, which I know is classic for many. And then I learned this song called Theology by the Black female composer Betty Jackson King because of everything that's been going on. I just really wanted to dive into the repertoire and elevate a voice in the best way I knew how of learning it and showing it to other people. So that's that's beautiful. And um I, I really uh, wish we, we all have to 
uh, make um, on each of our parts to make an effort to include uh, more and more um, black singers, black administrator, black audience members, black voices overall in uh, what we do as an art form is really essential. Um, and um, yeah, uh, so we are excited to be able to have you here. Um, we are excited to hear your voice. And again, I encourage all of your friends, all of the colleagues that are listening yes. to donate to the efforts so we can, um, you know, 100% of the money that we are fundraising today goes to all of you. So uh, we yes. are excited to be able to do that for, uh, for all of our singers. So without further ado, let's hear you sing, Susanna. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no. 
Hello, we are back. Thank you so much, Susanna, uh, for that beautiful performance. It's great to see you and hear you again. We are um, a little bit ahead of time. Um, we are waiting for our next singer. But in the meantime, of course, you can always donate right over here. You can donate to support these artists that are performing for all of you today. We are well into our um, uh, second hour of performance and um, we are going to be um, chatting with Raven Macmillan um, a little bit as soon as she is available and I get the thumbs up. Oh yeah. Hi Raven. How you hear me? Hi. How are you? Awesome. We're doing great. It's so great uh, to uh, meet you virtually and <laughs> to be able to hear your beautiful, absolutely stunning singing. Um, oh, thank you. Tell so us nice a little bit about you yourself. Well. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you too. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you're going to be performing for us today. Yeah, so um, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, and I am now associated with Opera Steamboat via Christina, actually, who we saw earlier. Um, and we are classmates at CCM. We just finished our master's. Um, so I will be going to Houston Grand Opera Studio in the fall, which is super exciting. And yeah. um, the videos that I sent for this event that I'm so excited to be a part of um, are three of my favorite arias, actually. So um, you'll be hearing Caro Nome, which is from Rigoletto by Verdi. And that's Gilda's aria. Um, basically, after she's met the Duke, who she doesn't know is the Duke, she thinks his name is Gualtier Magde. She just is so infatuated with him. And, you know, she claims that she will love him forever with her last breath. Um, and then you'll hear Willow Song, which is a little bit um, of a different kind of like love song in a way, kind of a lost love, um, wondering if they'll reconnect. And that's uh, Baby Doe's aria, first aria from The Ballad of Baby Doe by Douglas Moore. Um, and then my third aria is Duguay Soleil, which is Sophie um, from Verter um, by Massenet. And she is uh, Charlotte's younger sister. She is just a ray of sunshine, uh, literally. And, you know, the aria Duguay Soleil. <laughs> so she's saying, you know, the sun is shining. Um, everyone's in love. Love is in the air. Happiness is in the air. Cheer up, everyone, which I think is a very um, poignant sentiment at the moment. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um... It's, it's wonderful to to hear you sing Bella of Baby Doe. Um, it's a dear piece to a lot of Colorado residents. Uh, yeah, of course. I've heard that. Um, I think Central City Opera performed it uh, three, four years ago. Uh, they did a performance of it, and it has been performed many times. Um, yeah, w I really, um, our hope with this event was really to uh, bring awareness about you know, artists that are having gigs canceled left and right and uh, yeah. <laughs> having a, a chance to be able to raise money to support um, artists that are um, having a hard time right now. So I really appreciate you joining us today to to perform yeah. with us. Of course. I'm so uh, grateful for the opportunity and the invite to join. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's been I've been listening and everyone's great. So I'm glad to be a part of it. <laughs> awesome. Tell us a little bit about the uh, Houston Grand uh, program that you're going to be going in. Yeah. So Houston Grand has a yeah, young artist, a studio artist program. That's like a two, um, usually a two year residency. Um, and it's like um, similar to other young artist programs. You go and sing smaller roles, sometimes larger roles, um, cover large, larger roles. Um, so I'm really excited about um their season that's upcoming. My debut is supposed to be Frasquita and Carmen. So I'm very, very excited about that. And they're the some of the nicest people. I've only met them once in person, <laughs> most of them, but they're some of the nicest people. And they are so it's a great young artist program. And I can't wait to be a part of it. <laughs> Wonderful. Will you uh, be doing opera in the schools, outreach as well as performances on the main stage? Yeah, so I'm not completely sure, um, but I do believe so. I'm covering um, Peter in their new work, The Snowy Day, and I believe they're, um, if, if they do outreach with that, that I would be singing it. But I'm very excited about that as well. It's going to be a super cool new opera. <laughs> 
I know exactly. Um, and um, you were involved in um, in a contemporary work that was just done with Cincinnati Opera as well, correct? Yeah, I was supposed to premiere um, two roles with Cincinnati this summer, um, mm -hmm. and the I was supposed to premiere um, Fierce Morgan and Fierce. Um, which is an op a new opera by William Minifield. And that was all in the, you know, the programs and everything they sent out um, for the season. Um, unfortunately, that got postponed. We'll definitely be, I think they're still planning to premiere it um, because I worked on it. I workshopped it with the composer and with the librettist. Um, and it was a great, great work. I'm so excited about it. So hopefully, you know, we'll get to see it soon here. <laughs> That's great. Well, um, I believe we are ready to hear you sing. Uh, awesome. <laughs> and uh, we're looking forward to that. And thank you again for being part of this event and um, encourage your friends, colleagues, family members, everybody to donate if they can to support yes. all of our 24 young artists that are performing today. Thank you so much, Raven, for being part of this. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.
I believe we're back. Thank you so much, Raven, for that beautiful performance. It's great to hear you, Bella, Baby Dill. Um, such a beautiful um, opera and a beautiful um, performance of it. Uh, we are so excited to be doing this Ariathon today uh, and be able to be raising funds for all of these wonderful artists that are part of our Ariathon today. So I encourage you to continue to donate to us uh, via our website, operasteamboat.org. Um, we, my, my phone is just beeping constantly from all of the donations that are coming in. So I want to take the time to thank all of you who are donating for our artists. Um, 
it means a lot to be able to raise funds to support artists and uh, to encourage people and be able to do um, this sort of communal event uh, where we're all participating uh, and hopes to raise funds for all of the artists performing today. So uh, let's go to our next performers, uh, Omar Najmi and Brendan Shapiro. Uh, Omar, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> Where are you? I'm at home in Boston right now, quarantined with, with Brendan. Uh, yeah. Uh, is that a, a good, you said quarantine with Brandon. <laughs> uh, no, it's great and very useful, as you will see also yeah, for Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's great to have a, a pianist at hand. George, when he yeah. wants to sing, he puts me in the piano and uh, I have to play for him. Nice. Uh, but um, tell us a little bit about um, what you have been doing, what you are performing today. Yeah, sure thing. So I have three arias today. And I decided to use this opportunity to program a couple pieces that I don't get to do very often. They're pieces that I love that are not part of the super standard repertoire. And then I will also be doing one piece that is very well known. So the pieces I am singing include Empio per farti guerra from Handel's Tamerlano. This is Bayezet's rage aria. Tamerlano has, as a punishment, taken my daughter into his harem and I am swearing to wage war on him. Even after I die, I swear that I will come back as a ghost and haunt him. I will also be singing Lenski's aria from Eugene Onegin by Tchaikovsky. This is one of my all time favorites. And if you are not familiar with it, the poet Lenski is preparing to duel his best friend Onegin. And as he grapples with the prospect of his impending mortality, he wonders, will his beloved Olga shed a tear for him? And I will also be singing Freunde, das Leben ist lebenswert from Lehar's operetta Judita. This is Octavio's entrance aria. Octavio is a military officer stationed in North Africa, and his ship has just pulled into port into the small Mediterranean town where Judita lives. But the two of them have not met yet. They will ultimately be falling in love. But right now, Octavio is extolling the joys and pleasures of life, and particularly the pleasures of love. That is wonderful. And um, I'm so excited to hear you sing uh, Lang Lansky's aria. I think that's a great choice for you, for sure. I was, I'm was i excited to hear Tamarlano, too. That's, yeah, uh, such a great yeah, offer. Absolutely. Um, so what, what have you been doing? Let me. Uh, I just need to tell everybody about your incredible opera that you wrote that I think was going to get, this summer was going to get its first premiere, I believe, correctly? Yeah, well, I, so actually, so, so I uh, wrote my first opera, composed my first opera uh, last year. Uh, it's called En la Ardiente Oscuridad. It is sung in Spanish. It's based on a play by the same title. And I actually did premiere it last fall in a sort of, staged workshop yeah. format uh, that I produced entirely myself. I was a recipient of a grant here in Boston. Uh, so that was hugely exciting. But uh, after that first production, Brendan and I actually went out and presented the piece to a number of organizations and the Phoenicia International Festival of the Voice in New York selected it for their part of their summer season. So we were well into the planning process. We had done all the casting and everything and then COVID-19 hit and it was postponed. So right now the plan is to put it on in 2021. That's wonderful. I uh, I have to tell everybody, is there a way for people to hear in La Ardiente um, Profundidad? No, wait. Uh, in La Ardiente Oscuridad. In La Ardiente um, Oscuridad, sorry. Yeah, Profundidad. so one of the things that I'm still working on right now is uh, the the play on which it is based is not public domain. So I've been wor I've been working with the playwright's son who manages the estate. I've been working on on the rights. Um, and right now I don't I'm not in a position where I can release our recording. Right. But I hope to be able to do that soon. We do have a full archival recording of our initial production. So awesome. Well, thank you, Omar, for being part of it. And I believe we're going to go to the video to hear your beautiful singing. Thank you so much for joining awesome. us. Awesome, thank you.
Tag ein neues Erleben. Jede Stunde verjüngt sich die Welt. Die herrliche Welt singt die Sonne abends nieder. Strahlend steht sie morgen wieder auf dem Oh, 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Omar and Brendan, for those beautiful performances of those three arias. Uh, we are so excited at Opera Simbo to be doing this event today, our first ariathon, hopefully of many to come, uh, to raise funds for artists for different causes. But um, I wanted to take a little bit of time to tell you about the program that we just finished, uh, a two-week program called Real Life Opera where our young artists got a chance to get coachings from um, teachers from all over the country 
uh, coaches from all over the country and be able to do yoga with one of our performers today, Bridget Skaggs, um, uh, yoga for singers in particular. And also we had seminars every single day, a one hour seminar um, where they got a chance to talk uh, with an expert from different parts of the opera business, but also uh, leaders of symphonies be able to um, also talk with uh, uh, financial planners and get expertise from um, managers, just uh, all around uh, information to benefit for the future of their careers uh, and their training. Um, that was a, such a successful uh, program. Uh, we ran two, one real life opera and the other one tailored to your voice for singers that might not be interested in having an operatic career, but they still want to improve their and continue to work on their vocal training. Um, we will be probably be running those programs again later this summer. So I encourage you to check out our website, operasimba.org, and learn more about those programs um, and you know sign up to be part of our email blasts. Um, and um, we, we will continue to keep you uh, in the loop of what is coming up with Opera Steamboat. We have lots of great plans later this summer with our concert series called Home Sweet Home, uh, where we will have concerts for all of you from different artists from all over the country. Um, I hope you take the time to, um, uh, to donate uh, to our Ariathon today. We uh, are excited to be able to raise funds for the artists that are performing today. Everybody took um, the time to record or find recordings of their singing uh, to be able to um, perform for all of you, entertain you. And, but not only that, the, the musical aspect of it, but also the idea of being able to chat on YouTube and create a sense of belonging, um, that human connection that I think um, all of uh, all of the people that enjoyed opera and enjoy music are really uh, hungry for to be able to connect and it's wonderful to be looking at our chat and see so many familiar names and faces supporting each other all of the singers are there uh, cheering each other along and giving positive feedback uh, about their performances it's such a wonderful experience to be able to to see that and be able to um, connect with all of those singers. We are waiting um, for Megan Mueller to call us, but um, she may be having some technical uh, challenges to connect. But um, let me tell you a little bit uh, more about um, some of the things that we do at Opera Steamboat. As I mentioned, I've been with the organization for over five years. And this year was the first time that we receive um, an award from the National Endowment for the Arts. Uh, we are so proud of that. We have worked so hard to achieve the artistic excellence that our company strives for. And uh, this year we received um, that award, uh, that grant award from the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, uh, we also received this year a grant from Opera America to fund um, our production of Cookie, the opera, uh, a commission that is uh, being written by librettist Rachel Peters and um, composer Liana Kirchhoff, two women creating an opera about um, a woman. Uh, uh, the first woman inducted into the Auctioneers Hall of Fame, uh, such a powerful individual uh, in, um, in a time when she went to school with something like 133 men and she was the only woman uh, in that school uh, being trained for, to be an auctioneer. Um, and not only that, but um, uh, just an iconic voice and character uh, human being from, from Steamboat Springs, from our town. Um, we are excited to be able to present that piece next summer. Later this year, at the beginning of September, we will be doing a workshop of the opera, all via Zoom, uh, and we will be doing um, a presentation that will be broadcasted uh, to um, all of you um, in September. We will be releasing those dates uh, later on. But let's go to Megan Mueller, um, who is, I think, from her car calling. Uh, we're so excited to hear you. Hi, Megan. How are you? 
I'm doing well. How are you? Great. It's so great to see you. It's so great to see you, too. I'm sorry it's not in person, but it's wonderful to see your face as always, Andres. I know. It's great to see you. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, what you have been doing and tell us a little bit about, more importantly, what, what uh, you're singing today. Yes. Okay. So uh, kind of in the nothing really exciting during the quarantine or coronavirus, I've been working um, at a restaurant doing delivery driving, just kind of trying to make ends meet. And um, I'm very thankful to have a teacher who is able to do great lessons over FaceTime. So I have been plugging away, uh, improving my technique and stuff, which has been which has been very fun. Uh, the pieces I'm seeing for you today are ones that are near and dear to me. Um, I'm singing Vale de Coulé, Mes Larmes from Matinee's Berter. And that aria was the very first aria that I learned when I switched to Mesto. Um, <laughs> I kind of have a joke because my roommate at the time was a Mesto. And when I heard her sing that aria, I fell in love with it so much. So I say that's why I switched voice parts, was just so I could get to sing <laughs> it. it. Uh, <laughs> mezzo singing is contagious, I hear. Right. It is. It is. It's just that, mm, that warm, rich, buttery tones. I love it. And um, so that is from, like I said, Mass Mace Fair Tear. And it is Charlotte. Her mother has recently passed away and she has been left in charge of the family. But she's also a young girl coming of age and she falls in love with this poet named Berter. But she is betrothed to Albert um, and she promised her mom that, that she would marry Albert. And so she feels this, this duty, this responsibility to to be with him, even though her heart really wants to be with Berter. And so this aria happens after they've had this back and forth of, oh, we can't be friends, we can't be together, it's just too painful. And and it's around Christmas time and they've been separated for months and she's rereading his letters. And, uh, and so everything is very fresh in her mind. And then her sister pops in and is like, oh, by the way, how's Fair Chair doing? And she just kind of has this blowout moment where she just starts crying. Very, it's a very female moment. I feel very connected to this song. And so she's just like, ah, and she just lets all the tears come out. Um, and so, so that's why I really love that aria. And then the second one is O Mio Fernando from uh, Don Donizetti's La Favorita. And Leonora is literally the favorite. She is the favorite mistress of the king. But she is in love with a young man named Ferdinand. Uh, Fernando, sorry. And, um, and so at this point in the opera, this aria comes kind of later in the opera. Once again, love triangle, you know, <laughs> unrequited love, the stuff that operas are made of. Yeah. Um, and so she... There has been all this back and forth. She's really kept her identity a secret because she's so embarrassed that she's the mistress, even though she really does kind of want to play the game and become queen. You know, that is her, but she really is in love with Fernando. And Fernando has, um, you know, gone up the ranks as a soldier. And so the king wants to, um, to reward him. And so he says, what would you like as your reward? And he says, I want that woman. And so she's overjoyed because she's like, wow, I'm finally going to get to marry him. But she's also, she feels very ashamed that she's going to bring, that he's going to reject her and bring dishonor to her. And so she says, wow, I'm cursed because no matter what I do, I'm going to be unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, um, it's a so, heart-wrenching moment. Right, right. You know, just lots of fun material for the Metsos to sing. Right. And um, and then the last piece I'm singing is Mon Cœur Soubra Ta Voix from the okay. famous opera about Samson and Delilah, Sasson et Dalila. And um, so Dalila, Dalila has actually, right before she sings this aria, has been plotting with one of the Philistine leaders to bring Sasson down, you know? And so, she, and they don't think that she can do it. And she's like, oh, no, 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 just you wait. I'm going to ruin him. And then, and then just right on cue, there's lightning strikes and Seth all comes around the corner and he's like, Oh, I, I, I'm here, but I cannot be with you because I cannot betray my people like this. And then she sings this seductive, gorgeous, butter like aria to be like, no, 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 no. I love you so much. 
And so I think there is a part of it. I like to make her a little more human. I think there's a part of her that really does mean it. She really does love him. Awesome. But it is, you know, to entrap him and uh, eventually for his doom. So that's yeah. always fun. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. The Mets have brought him down. Um, right. Megan, it's so awesome to see you. It's so awesome to hear you. Let's go to you. uh, your um, your performance right now and enjoy some Perfect. beautiful singing Perfect. from Megan. Morgan. Also, wait. Thank you one so much thing, for joining it's us. It's my mom's birthday. It's oh, my mom's happy birthday. birthday. Mom. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I love happy you, mom. Birthday. Okay. All right. Thank you, Andres. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mama Mila. <laughs> Bye. Hi, my name is Megan Mueller, and I will be singing Va les écouler mes larmes from Massenet's Verte. Charlotte is singing this aria to her little sister. Charlotte's lover is Verte, and she hasn't seen him in many months, and she's overwhelmed with grief. And so the first words are literally, go and let the tears fall. I hope you enjoy. I will be singing is Mon Coeur S'ouvre Ta Voix from Camille Saint-Saëns, Saint-Saëns et Dalila. It's an opera about the famous love story between Samson and Dalila. Dalila sings this to Saint-Saëns when he comes to her and says, I can't betray my people and I can't be in love with you. And she responds to him with this aria to seduce him by saying, respond to my tenderness and fill me with ecstasy. I hope you enjoy.
last aria I will be singing for you is O Mio Fernando from Donizetti's La Favorita. Leonora is a courtesan of the king, but she's deeply in love with the young soldier Fernando. Fernando has just asked for the hand of marriage of Leonora, but she's conflicted because she feels like she'll bring dishonor to his name. And so she sings this aria saying that she's cursed and has no pardon in heaven or hell. I hope you'll enjoy.
Opera Perdon in Cell. Wow, that's amazing um, uh, words to finish. Uh, thank you so much, Megan, for uh, beautiful performances. I believe um, uh, with our uh, executive producer, uh, Ben Gully over here, uh, we have Christopher Humbert um, ready to go. Hi, Christopher. Hello, Andres. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. We are going well into our third hour, almost reaching our fourth hour of the Aria Fund, halfway through. Um, we are excited. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, what you will be singing for us today. Yeah, um, so obviously my name is Chris Humbert. I, a, I hail from Columbus, Ohio. Um, I I am very excited to be singing for you today. Um, a couple of the signature selections, I will say, uh, from my budding opera career, I guess. Um, so today I will be singing the infamous code aria, Vecchia Zimana uh from Bohème. Um, and I tried to weave together a, a theme out of these selections. And mm. the theme that I was able to come up with was loss. So all of these characters that I will be playing have all lost something or are losing something in the context of their um, reality. The next selection uh, is Olin Blitch's Hear Me, O Lord. Um, and my next one after that will be Non Pian Drive from Le Non Ti Di Figaro. Uh, Elisha Fitzgibbon's aria, we're going to throw it to some contemporary um, mm. by Evan Mack and Joshua McGuire. And I will be finishing hopefully with Lonely Room from Oklahoma. Um, oh, and I'm very excited for you all to hear. Yeah, thank you so much for, for joining us. It's, it's wonderful to get a chance to hear you uh, and um, be able to, to see you perform. Um, I just wanna remind everybody that uh, we, um, I believe it's somewhere over here, that we have our donation link. Uh, people can continue to donate um, during the eight hours. Uh, people were able to donate all week and the donations are coming in, uh, particularly today, um, uh, quite a lot. So we are so thankful for all of you who are donated. And I think um, we are ready to go to, um, to hear Christopher sing. Thank you so much, Christopher, jo for joining us. And uh, I hope you're staying uh, healthy and strong, and uh, let's hear Christopher sing. Yes, thank you, Andres. Thank you. Thank you. 
tra i barbaroni amoroso, notte e giorno di corno girando, delle vere trovagli il riposo, darci sento ad un giro d'amor, delle belle trovagli il riposo, darci sento ad un giro d'amor. Cherubino alla vittoria, alla gloria militare, Cherubino alla vittoria, alla gloria militare, alla gloria militare, alla gloria militare. Schafitz given for governor. Eli Schafitz given for governor. My face looks out on posters and buttons. Crowds chant the promises of unshakable support, but I'm Patty's choice, the candidate who doesn't want the job, a reluctant gladiator. I'm tired. I'm tired of selling myself to strangers. I would quit, but it's not allowed. I would quit, but it's not allowed. All of this glory.
the door squeaks and the mouse keeps a nibbling on the broom and the sun flicks my eyes it was all a pack of lies I'm awake in a lonely I ain't gonna dream about her arms no more. I ain't gonna leave her alone. Going outside, get myself a ride. Give me a woman to call my We are back. Thank you so much, Christopher, for uh, the beautiful performance um, uh, of Oklahoma. Um, we um, are waiting to connect with our next singer. But in the meantime, I want to encourage you to continue to donate. 100% of the money that we raise today goes to the artists performing um, today during our Ariathon. There are 24 people. So all of the money that we are raising is being split 24 ways uh, so each of these singers get the same amount um, we hope that you will continue to donate uh, we have had uh, good donations but of course uh, when you are splitting that money amongst 24 singers uh, we need to raise a lot more to to really make a difference in their lives right now so i hope and encourage you to continue to donate through the eight hours of our Ariathon. We have reached, <laughs> we have reached, uh, we are two minutes away from reaching our midway point uh, where we have actually gone through four hours of arias and songs uh, of incredible performances from uh, varied singers uh, from all over the country and the world. Um, we are so excited to be able to do this. Uh, it's part of um, our mission to bring um, high artistic quality uh, to our performances, and I think the singers that are performing today do that. Um, uh, we want to encourage you to continue to be in touch with us, join our mailing list, join um, our activities. We have a lot of uh, plans for the near future. Our next endeavor will be Home Sweet Home, uh, a series of concerts from singers' um, comfortable environment at home, entertaining uh, our audience. But right now, let's go to Elizabeth Maranti, who is our Midway Point singer. We have reached four hours. So Elizabeth, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I am great. It's great to see you and hear you. Uh, tell us a little bit about what we'll, we'll be hearing from you today. Um, so I will be singing Otsitra Nicht from Die Zauberflute, um, Chacun le sait from La Fille de Regiment, uh, Tornamia Vagejar from Alcina, and um, an art song Er Ists by Hugo Wolf. That is an incredible. What is it like to sing uh, the Queen of the Night? What does that feel like? How long have you been singing that that song, and what is it like to actually perform it? I I've been singing Queen for a couple of years, and she's an incredibly um, powerful character. Um, there's a, a true, sincere feel of pride and emotion when you're on stage performing her character because she is so refined and powerful. Yeah, and Otsitra um, Nicht is not an, ear, uh, an easy aria to perform. I, <laughs> not I, at know, all. <laughs> everybody, everybody's scared of the second aria, but I think this aria is pretty terrifying as well uh, because, uh, you know, the dramatic intent of it, but also the coloratura and the extension and those high yes. Fs that, that finish at the end of a run <laughs> that go through the middle of your range on the way up to a high F. So, yeah, honestly, the second aria, I could probably wake up and sing that fine. It's always the first aria that gets me a little nervous. 
Yeah. Well, uh, without further ado, as um, the the three ladies say, Sie kommt, Sie kommt. Uh, okay, let's go to uh, hear Elizabeth Renandi. Mon 
Elizabeth, thank you so much for a beautiful performance. It was so wonderful to be able to hear you. Um, I want to continue to encourage people to donate to our Ariathon. Our uh, link is still oh, some uh, oh, oh, over here. There we go. Um, uh, you can donate or go to our website under our Ariathon um, drop down. You can actually select donate now and we encourage you to do so. It takes you to Vendini where you can donate and 100% of the funds that we raised today go to the singers that are performing for you today during our eight hours. Um, I want to take the time to tell you a little bit about um, Opera Theme Boats, um, Opera in the Schools program. We uh, do performances, um, we visit about 10 different schools in Route County in rural Colorado. And let me tell you, um, the services that Opera Theme Boat provides uh, to these schools is really essential. Um, there are not a lot of organizations that are performing in rural Colorado providing um, uh, opera, presenting music, classical music to uh, these students. Uh, we do a performance uh, every spring in March and this year uh, unfortunately we had to postpone it to next year uh, our performance of Frida Kahlo and the bravest girl in the world um, that we hope to do next spring but uh, feel free to go to our website and learn more about our organization um, my name I don't think I have in the last uh, eight hours introduced myself uh, Andres Cladera I'm the artistic director of Opera Steamboat but um, we have our next singer Namdi, uh, ready to go. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. Great. It's so nice to meet you virtually. And yeah. it's great. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to uh, hear you sing. But before we do that, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, selections that you have chosen for us today? Sure thing. Uh, so I'm Namdi Wonkwo. I am a baritone and I'm currently based in uh, Broomfield, Colorado. Uh, currently pursuing a master's degree in voice at uh, CU Boulder. Um, and the pieces I have picked for today, um, number one is the uh, Count Aria or I Javin Pela Causa uh, from La Nozze di Figaro. Uh, and this aria is sung by um, Count Almaviva. Uh, he has abolished a old feudal right called the Droit de Seigneur. Uh, and which gives it's a horrible right, which gives the uh, a feudal lord the right to sleep with a female servant the night before her wedding day, which is absolutely terrible. But he abolished it, but wants to enact it in secrecy uh, with Susanna. And he thinks he has her in her clutches, but uh, <laughs> overhears her Not and Figaro. <laughs> horrible baritones, huh? <laughs> But um, over here is her and Figaro kind of talking about uh, a little scheme that they have planned. So he then sings about this treachery. Um, mm -hmm. My second piece is a uh, cabaret piece by uh, Ben Moore called I'm Glad I'm Not a Tenor, which coincidentally is also what I tell myself at night to hey! go to sleep. <laughs> ben, ben Golly, who's sitting over here, is not too happy to hear that. <laughs> Me too. I'm glad too. You're amazing. <laughs> well, it's a yeah, it's a it's a it's basically the uh, alto's lament for baritones. So it's just <laughs> about it's about a baritones just upset that we don't we don't always get the fun tunes that everyone always remembers. Um, but yeah, it's a fun song. I love singing that one. Um, then my third piece is a spiritual by uh, Moses Hogan called uh, Deep River. I've had this piece for a while now. It's really near and dear to my heart, um, and. I love singing it, especially now. Awesome. Uh, Namdi, the, you know, I, I was mentioning to Stephanie, uh, who actually sang Deep River um, earlier oh. today, um, but um, it's great to hear um, a male voice singing it because my, my memory is, when I was a kid, is Jesse Norman singing that. Um, uh, but um, yeah, it's, it's just an incredible, an incredible tune. And uh, um, the words, I think, are deeply... Um, spiritual um no pun mm -hmm. intended yeah no pun intended thanks <laughs> thanks but, um, <laughs> um but uh go back to to uh the counts aria mm -hmm. and um you know i i in my days uh i used to sing that aria that was always my starting aria and um what what do you find 
sort of the most enjoyable part of that aria and the most uh, challenging? Um, for me, the most enjoyable and challenging part is the entire allegro section it's just mm -hmm. it's kind of like it's it's really the test of did i do everything right <laughs> in the yeah. first half because if you you know if you gun too much in the first half of the aria then that second part of the aria is just yeah. whew, it's <laughs> it's just a race to the end but yeah. i i i enjoy that as part of the challenge and i just the uh the runs in it uh and the and Oh, I'm a, we, the, one, of the, one of the high notes that baritones get the F sharp at the end. It's just, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's fun. It's both fun, uh, my favorite, and uh, most challenging part, too. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting role because it sits around D and E flat, but mostly, mm -hmm. I mean, the sorry is D, 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 except for that F sharp that comes out of nowhere. Uh, oh, yeah. But uh, uh, a lot of the time, I'm like, shouldn't this be a role for a bass because <laughs> uh, it, it feels if you're a lyric baritone singing that it feels a little bit on the low side sometimes except yeah. you know when you're in an in the ensembles and you hear uh, Figaro at the bottom of, of the barrel down there singing in the ensembles and it's nicer to be a little bit higher but um oh yeah uh it's so exciting to uh, get a chance to meet you and uh, to hear you sing, um, we uh, we hope that people will continue to donate uh, because again, 100% of the money that we raise today goes to all of our singers. Um, uh, so without further ado, Nandi, we are going to go to uh, hear you sing. So thank you so much for being part of this. Thank you. Hope everyone enjoys. <laughs> Quallaccio io cantea Per me Io voglio Io voglio di tal modo punirvi A piacer mio la sentenza sarà La vecchia pretendente Toccarla In qual maniera E poi Antonio Che ho incognito figlio ricusa Di Dario la nipote in matrimonio Col divano l'orgoglio Di questo mentecato Tutto ciò da un laccio Il corpo è fatto Vedrò mentre io sospiro Felice a un servo mio Ja, 
la speranza sola che le vendette vie questa anima consola e giubilar mi fa e giubilar e giubilar mi fa ah, per salvi in pace non può questo contento tu non nascesti audace per la E forse cor per rire, per rire mia infelicità. C'ha la speranza sola, che le vendette mie, questa anima consola, e giubilar mi fa, e giubilar, e giubilar mi fa, e to tenors in the opera world it would appear that Essentura can alone ensure a gorgeous melody that people love to hear well I'm not hooked on Nessendorma and to prove my case I'll now perform a little song to make it absolutely Clear. I'm glad I'm not a tenor, for anyone can see their Philistines and drama queens, and rarely over five foot three. Yes, I'm glad I'm not a tenor. Why would I want it so? To have to try to sing so high when it's so nice and comfy way down low. Yet since my first voice lesson, I've heard you got the stuff. But higher scales each session were never high. I'm glad I'm not a tenor, but some don't seem convinced. They say the things I said to you and nothing new, like tenors get the good tunes. Well, I am here to say that's just not true. Tune you could name 
And the thrill is the real change is made to think of how truly strange it is that some baritone twist they had met ten lives instead. Let's skip ahead.
Thank you, Namdi, for the beautiful performance of Deep River. Uh, and we have, I believe we have live, Laura Strickling all the way from St. John. St. Thomas in Saint the U.S. Thomas. Virgin Islands. I'm, I'm in St. John, you're in St. Thomas. One of the disciples. <laughs> I'm having a little bit of a hard time hearing you, so I'll do my best, okay? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it's, it sounds like it's quite windy. Um, a little how, bit. <laughs> how are you doing? We're doing well. It's, uh, you know, it's an interesting, we, we've been living here for six years and it's an interesting place to sit out a quarantine. Yeah, absolutely. It's a standing place, but I know that you guys have gone through a lot of uh, upheaval with storms and hurricanes and, uh, you know, all of this weather that uh, St. Thomas has. Uh, yeah, battled. yeah. But, we, um, we, we do not like hurricanes and hurricane season started on June 1st. So we're I all know. kind of holding our breath until November. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Laura, um, tell us a little bit about this incredible piece, a cappella piece that you have um, uh, secured for us today and that you will be performing. Awesome. So Andres asked me to do an aria and I love opera um, but last year uh, Juliana Hall wrote a one-woman show for me basically it's an unaccompanied monodrama for soprano and I it's the perfect piece for our times because I live in the Virgin Islands I do not have a pianist here when in my normal life when I am a traveling singer I uh, plan ahead and learn all my music with pianists stateside wherever I happen to be um, but I don't have someone I can work with here. So um, getting kind of getting around this social distancing um, performance land where I'm on this island, I cannot leave this island, I cannot work with pianists, even if, even if, even if we were in the same room and staying apart, I can't do it. So um, I have this piece that Juliana wrote for me last year, Juliana Hall, and librettist is Caitlin Vincent. And it's perfect because it is unaccompanied and meant to be unaccompanied. And, and um, so even last year when I was learning it, I didn't have to worry about not having a pianist where I live. It was truly something that I could work on by myself and perfect. And now here we are in the situation where I still don't have access to a pianist and I still have this piece that I can bring out. That's fantastic. Tell us a little bit about um, what, what the text is and you know, what, what sort of this monodrama is, um, is about. Absolutely. So it's called Sentiment, and it's a monodrama in six acts, and it's about emotion. Um, and so I feel like we're all <laughs> feeling a lot of emotions these days. So it's it's not just appropriate because it's unaccompanied and, and a, a social distancing piece. It's, it's about emotion. And so I think certainly when I learned it last year, I felt it, I felt it very deeply um, because being able to put myself in all of those emotional spaces um, in front of an audience was very, you know, kind of laying myself bare. It was really nerve wracking. <laughs> and now here we all are. We're all in these extreme, emotionally ex extreme places. And so I think we can all relate to this person <laughs> and how she's speaking to you, like specifically to you. And, you know, I've sung it for live audiences. And it has to be as immediate as you and me in this room, even if it's you, you, uh, I am one person, you are 300 people, or it's me, one person, and you, one person on the other side of the computer camera. That's awesome. It's, uh, uh, I think, it's such an appropriate uh, piece to, to be performing right now. Um, you know, and I think we all have, because of what is happening in the country, it's kind of a, a perfect storm of uh, lots of tension, um, lots of people being trapped, feeling trapped inside their homes for months. And um, I think uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's an important piece to listen and listen to what those emotions are. You know, um, emotions are not facts, but they're valid, they're valid things to, to feel, right? Um, and it's such a, I think a powerful performance and you do such a beautiful rendition of it. Um, I'm very excited to be able to present it to our audience and all of our um, new audience members that are part of. We have had such incredible response of people signing up for this event, and we have seen a lot of people constantly um, come in and out to hear all of the performances. We want to continue to encourage people to donate um, via our link um, that is some 
where over here, no, the other way, boom, right there. Um, uh, feel free to c continue to donate so we can support all of the artists that are performing today. So without further ado, we will go to R Laura Strickland's performance. Thank you. Nice Thank you, Laura. See you. Hello. Good morning. Good evening. Bonjour. Bonjour. Salutations. I like your shirt. I like your shoes. I like your eyes, your ears, your nose. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. I like everything about you, but most of all, I like that you're here. I like no. I love that you're here. All of us here. Peace. 
pretty house, a blue afternoon, a pile of unfolded laundry, a lonely teddy bear. Can you hear me? Oh, 
forget it, forget her. You'll forget, won't you? Only see my soul. we are back thank you so much laura for that stunning performance of uh, emotions uh our next singer we are uh waiting to connect with the next person um uh, alice dawinspeck uh but before we do that i want to encourage people to continue to check out our website upper and see our um all of the wonderful things that our organization is doing, our Young Artist Program that we have every year, you can learn about it. Our auditions will be happening this fall all over uh, the US and our applications are gonna be coming in and available in August. Um, we encourage young artists to be part of uh, that uh, program, um, as well as the programs, the um, online programs that we had earlier this summer and we will probably have later this summer in July or August uh, real life opera and tailored to your voice. Let's go now to Alice to say hi. Hi, Alice. How are you doing? Hello. I'm doing very well. How are you, Andres? I am great. It's so great to see you. Hope everything is going well and that you're staying healthy. Yes, staying healthy and well and practicing up a storm. Oh, fantastic. Um, That's great to hear. Uh, although yep, you're mm -hmm. always an impeccable voice. Um, oh, please. Tell us a little bit about what um, you will be singing for us today. Yes, I have compiled three arias, each with a sort of little preceding blurb about what they're about. I will begin with Condotta Lera and Cepi from Verdi's Il Trovatore, followed by a Sibelius from his Opus 37 that I absolutely love, called Flickan Comi Fronts in Elskling's Muta. And I will be finishing off with uh, Vitalia's aria from La Clemenza di Tito, Non più di fiori, or No More Flowers. And before Andres gets it moving, I did want to say a huge, huge thank you to him and to Opera Simbo for reaching out. Um, I got to say, as an alumna of the program and as a young musician, it just it means the world to you to have someone to reach out to you and say, please share your gift. Please, even in this time of just unprecedented you know turmoil in so many different ways in our country please take a moment and have and share your gift with everyone that is something that i really really treasure and i wanted to thank you for that andres well thank you it means a lot to hear that um you know we i think it's it's challenging in our business uh because a lot of mm -hmm. the time we are so focused on you know making our art and making right. it perfect mm -hmm. Uh, and right. we forget sort of the human side and how important people yeah. are. And I think this, this um, what is happening right now with COVID brings it, at least it brought me um, mm -hmm. to the realization what is important about our work and what's important mm -hmm. is, yes, music, but it's also the people that are part of uh, what we do. And um, yeah. so it was a time for reflection for me and it's a time of realization. And I'm so happy, I'm so honored that you uh, chose to participate in this and uh, that you're sharing your gift with our audience. Um, I have heard you sing Condotta before 
and it's a mm-hmm. stunning performance. And uh, so I look forward to hearing it again. So without further ado, thank you so much for being part of it. And we'll go to your performance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. This aria is Consorta Elera in Cepi from Verdi's Il Trovatore, in which the gypsy woman Asuchena regales the story to Manrico of her mother at the orders of the count being dragged away from her and burnt at the stake in front of her own eyes. Answering her mother's plea of Mi vendica, Asuchena obliges and sees her opportunity to avenge the death of her mother when she sees the count's son and tries to burn him alive. But as we know in opera instead. Enjoy. Oh, 
Flickan Komi Fron Sin Elsklings Muta is the next song about a young girl, a maiden who returns from her lover's tryst, each time more enamored until ultimately she discovers that he had been unfaithful to her. This is from Sibelius's Opus 37, which includes five songs written in Swedish. Although he was a Finnish composer, he wrote a lot in the more popular the vernacular, the conquering language, Swedish. So now for something completely different. Enjoy. <laughs> part of Mozart's La Clemente di Tito, Vitalia, the deposed empress, must face a moral dilemma. Should she tell the truth that it was her idea to assassinate the emperor and in doing so jeopardize her whole future in the kingdom? Or does she let Sesto, that boy, take the fall? Ultimately, she redeems herself in this moment and decides she must tell the truth no matter what, whether death comes toward her, no matter what the punishment, she will tell the truth and she will spare the innocent Sesto. Enjoy.
are back. Thank you, Alice, so much for joining us. Uh, it's great to hear you sing, uh, and it's it's here to it's great to he hear you sing uh, "Non più di fiori." Um, uh, we are going to um, hopefully connect with Georgia soon. Uh, but before we do, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the commission that we're going to be um, doing a workshop later this summer, at the beginning of September. We're going to be workshopping the opera Cookie that uh, Rachel Peters and Liana Kirchhoff are writing for Opera Steamboat, thanks to Opera America, um, the funding that we received from that organization. You can read more about Cookie Lockhart, the star of uh, this opera, um, and uh, in our website. So without further ado, let's go to Georgia Beaumont, who is live, I believe, now. Hi, Georgia. Hello. Hi, Andres. How are you? It's great to see you. It's so good to see you as well. How have yeah. you been? Uh, I've been great. You sound like you're fully warmed up. <laughs> you're like, what? <laughs> I'm just here, excited to say hello. And I don't know, That's... I'm just so thankful that you thought of me. And this is such oh. an amazing opportunity. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, great. Uh, it's great to be able to join uh, 24 artists to perform today and be able to raise some money for all of you. So um, we, before we go to your recordings, I wanna uh, make sure that um, people are still donating. 
uh, our link is right, nope, the other way, right over here. <laughs> uh, they can donate to um, uh, our um, Artiathon today and 100% of the money that we raise today goes to the artist. But Georgia, tell us a little bit about what you have been doing and tell us a little bit about the Arias that you will perform today. Well, I graduated a couple weeks ago with my bachelor's in music from yes. Rice University. Yay. <laughs> Yay, so it's very exciting. You know, online classes were a hassle, but I'm just happy that I'm healthy, my family's healthy. Um, and then I'm excited to be returning in the fall for my master's in music and vocal performance at Rice University as well. Wonderful. So that'll be exciting. But other than that, I don't know, just been hiding indoors. There are good <laughs> days and bad days, but I feel like the one thing that saved me is music. I feel like without music, we'd all be sitting, we're already bored with music. So how, what would we be like if we didn't have it basically? Um, so these five pieces, there's four arias that I prepared in one art song are, saw, are pieces that just make me feel happy when I sing them. You know, either the characters are happy themselves, but also they just make Georgia Belmont really happy when I sing them. And so I'm starting off with the fire aria from Ravel's L'Enfant et le Sortilège, which is my favorite aria at the moment. And it's so fun because it's just a coloratura filled rage aria, which I'm yes. sure we can all relate to right now. <laughs> um, and basically I just scream for two minutes and that is so much fun. And then following that is Durchzärtlichkeit from Mozart's Die Entführung aus dem Sarai, which is just a classic. Um, and that again is kind of bossing someone around for about two to three minutes. So I have a lot of fun doing that. And then I have Be Kind and Courteous from Britain's A Midsummer Night's Dream, which is just beautiful music and really fun and just an exciting piece. And then I have Da Tempeste from Handel's Giulio Cesare, which is exciting and difficult, but coloratura is my favorite thing to do. So I have a lot of fun with this piece. And then finally, I just wanted to end this a uh, whole experience with Will There Really Be a Morning from Previn's three Emily Dickinson songs. This has been set so many different ways by so many different composers. Um, and this is just my favorite setting. I think the three pieces together are beautiful, but this poem alone is so hopeful and exciting. And I hope that it, I don't know, brings people joy and they have a great time watching. I absolutely, um, it's a beautiful piece. Um, I, I can't wait to hear. I mean, that's a lot of coloratura <laughs> back to back. Um, uh, I, I, you just mentioning the fire um, aria, you know, in 2015, when I first joined Opera Steamboat, we did uh, L'Enfant et le Sortilège with oh, an, wow. an amazing arrangement. Um, if you ever want to do it, uh, there's an arrangement for two pianos, cello and flute. That's oh it. Oh, my God. Of the wow. entire of the entire opera, and it is such an amazing piece um, that can be done with you know a lot of people performing it. But I think the mm -hmm. core ensemble is like ten people, ten yeah. singers, two pianists, a flute, and um, and a cello. The flute actually also plays slide whistle, which is always challenging to do <laughs> for any wind, wind player. But it's such an amazing arrangement um, that That's keeps really sort of the the yeah. overall lusciousness of that score. But um, mm -hmm. I look forward to hearing you sing that because uh, I know that you sing that so well and, and it's a tough <laughs> aria and it's one of those arias in a competition if somebody brings it either you do it impeccably well or you can't sing it <laughs> there's no middle road uh, and I know you do an amazing job with it so I look forward to hearing that uh, and all of the flashy difficult coloratura that you have programmed for us today um, yeah. thank you well, so I much for guys... joining us Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy. They were, these videos are from a couple weeks ago and I had um, a different colored hair. So <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy the blonde version of myself. Congrats so. again on graduation. Congrats on, gra on graduation. Thank you guys so much. Okay, thanks for joining us. Let's go to the performances by Georgia Belmont. Thank you. 
and we are back uh sorry there we had a little technical glitch um we just uh <laughs> ben is like gonna kick me any moment um we just wanted to take the time to again thank everybody who has been donating uh to our event um and just a reminder that all of their donations will be split amongst the 24 singers that are participating today so the more the more you donate and you support these singers the more money they will receive so uh thank you so much for uh donating to the event we um will keep uh donations open um all day um so i hope that you will continue to do so um you know our our company has been uh in existence for 18 years and we're marching on uh we we have a uh, wonderful institution with um, incredibly supportive board members um, that are devoted to the institution and what we do to bring um, artistic, high artistic excellence in singing uh, to, uh, the, to Route County and Northwestern Colorado. Um, we, we work so hard at making sure that we are hiring uh, young artists, that we are engaging our community, that we're bringing um, art to schools, that we are doing workshops with community members, engaging um, integrated community, the Latino community, integrating uh, partners in integrating um, other organizations throughout Steamboat that uh, do so much for our community. Uh, all of our young artists get a chance to perform around Steamboat every summer and engage with the entire town uh, of Steamboat Springs, Colorado. So I hope that you will take the time to check out our website and learn more about our organization. What we do, we transform our community. We transform people's lives through the power of musical presentations, through the incredible gift of singing. Uh, it, is, it is incredible what music can do to people's lives. And this is a testament. This event is a testament to that. Uh, what these 24 incredible performers uh, are doing for all of you today is an incredible gift that we are happy to share with you and they are happy to share with you. Um, wow, so wow, we wow. thank you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Here I'm trying to be serious and Ben is uh, singing along in the background. Um, why an Ariathon? Because um, it's a great way to present a lot of artists and to raise funds for people that are in need. A lot of um, the artists here that are performing today and other artists um, are really struggling. We are all struggling and we need everybody's support. If you have it within your means to support artists, to support institutions that are committing to um, support artists and to pay artists and to engage artists in smart, incredible, innovative ways, I hope that you are paying attention and that you're supporting those institutions. Upper Steamboat is a small company in rural Colorado, but we are trying to be innovative. We're trying to do something different. We're trying to engage our audience and expand our audience. This is a time to um, double up and try to do more, not less, if we are able. And it doesn't have to be by spending a lot of money, but engaging with artists who are interested in making sure that institutions are alive and well. So I'm proud to be the artistic director of our organization and uh, to have the support of an incredible group of people in our community um, and our board members um, that uh, are supporting these endeavors. I want to thank them all. All of our board members, our current board members, our president, uh, Jenny Maxwell, and our vice chair, uh, Melissa Hampton, as, as well as our treasurer, Jack Dysart, and our secretary, Maine Ling Simpson, um, and all of our board members, of course, and all of our incredible donors, people who donate uh, housing, who donate uh, gift cards, who donate their, um, you know, preparing a, a party or donate uh, the, with a check to our organization. Those are the people that make our organization run, that make uh, our innovative ideas, our thinking, our progressive thinking uh, in the world of opera make a difference. And um, I know that there are a lot of people from other companies watching us today and saying, how did this tiny company manage to do this? Because we're engaging 
these incredible artists that are willingly coming to help us uh, raise funds for um, um, the artists that are performing today. So I want to thank, um, again, our board, all of our donors, all of the people that are donating today, all of our artists, and a special a big thank you to Ben Gully, who is an incredible friend and an incredible ally of the organization who's helping us today making this broadcast come alive. I believe, I Hi. believe we have Seneca uh, live and ready to chat with us. Hi Seneca, how are you doing? Hello, I'm doing very well. How are you guys? Uh, we are great. I feel like, you know, we should be stretching by now because we're in like hour six of yeah. doing this and- uh, The Olympics uh, for you guys right now, but it's fantastic so far. Yeah, it's it's great to do it. And, um, and it's great to see you and great it's to well. be able to hear you again. Um, tell us a little bit about what you have been doing, um, uh, singing wise and otherwise, how you are staying um, strong and healthy. Of course, I am currently in rainy Parker, Colorado, so not too far from y'all. But yeah, I mean, Colorado is beautiful as ever, though. And uh, what's been nice is, you know, obviously, like most folks, I've had a lot more free time on my hands. I'm still I'm still working another job, which is nice. Uh, I have a nice remote job that I've been able to do from home in the meantime. But in terms of my my musical craft and my artistry and things like that, I've really taken the time to try and dive more into a repertoire that I know feels good for me. Um, really just explore the different areas of those things. And really, especially when I'm home alone, I try and vocalize as much as I can, uh, chat with folks in the music industry as often as I can, just to try and keep all those things alive. Um, yeah, that's that's essentially what I've been up to. That's awesome, um, uh, Seneca. The the last time uh, we I did not conduct that, but um, Opera Simba produced something. You sang. You were part of the production of Fantastic Mr. Fox by Tobias Picker. I was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a lot a of fun. Yeah. Have you had a <laughs> chance to sing any more contemporary music? You know, a lot of that is what I've been diving into. That, among other things, is something that I've been diving to, diving into more so as of recent. Um, especially um, a couple summers ago, I got a chance to cover uh, the role of Bastianello in John Musto's Bastianello. So that was one of my next uh, very contemporary style pieces that I got to dive into. And then um, there was a gentleman who works there. His name is John Feather. I'm sorry, I say there. This was at Wolf Trap Opera. There's a gentleman there named... Uh, John Feather, who I who I I love that man, and he also has a similar love for contemporary repertoire, and essentially just gave me an aria book, and I've been diving into things like Breaking the Waves, and uh, uh, shoot, there's one more that I can't even remember, but <laughs> there's so many, there's so many, but uh, uh, you know Moby Dick and things like that. I love yeah, diving into those type of repertoire. Um, yeah, I mean it's a fantastic area. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, Seneca, just some, some people from our audience might be wondering, um, your, your name and your last name are sort of not, you know, a lot of people ask me, Andres Cordero, where is that from? People yeah. don't know, where is the name Seneca come from? So my, both my first name and my last name come from two completely different areas. So my first name, Seneca, is actually, uh, it's Native American uh, from the Seneca tribe. I, I spell my name uh, differently, though. Uh, from how the tribe actually spells their name, but they are that that tribe is native to the uh, northern New York area, um, wow. and it means peacekeeper. I, I'd like to think I'm somebody that likes to keep the peace, <laughs> and Absolutely. yeah, and that uh, my last name Klee uh, is actually German. Uh, it's uh, in Germany it would be pronounced Clay, Clay, and then I think it was modernized a little bit when you know ancestors came through Ellis Island and things like that. But um, yeah, there's actually a, a famous painter that I found out I was related to, uh, Paul Clay, yeah. Um, yeah, who was native to that area. And uh, so wow. yeah, two completely different things with both my names. You don't yeah. know who Paul Clay is. I totally know who <laughs> Paul Clay is. Hush, you should lead with that. I'm kidding. Uh, no, you know, it's, it's incredible, uh, Seneca. I actually discovered um, through 23andMe two aspects of my background that I had no idea. That Are I we actually, related? I'm sorry. Are we related? No, no, we're not. I actually do have <laughs> Kevin Native, Bacon. Kevin Na Bacon. <laughs> Native American blood myself, and oh, I nice. did not know that. And uh, I also have uh, Ashkenazi Jewish blood as well in, in my ancestry. And I had no idea. I discovered through yeah. through 23andMe. But um, I'd, be, I'd be curious to try something like that. I've never done that, but I'd be it'd be I'd probably eye opening for me to try something like that. 
It, it definitely was. It, it tells you a lot about the commonality of humanity. Where we think yeah. that, and that's we, great. And that's we that's are fantastic. all different, and we're not. We yeah. <laughs> come from the same um, uh, the same groups of people. Uh, let's let's uh, discuss a little bit about what we're going to hear today. Of course. So there's uh, four pieces that I have lined up. I have no idea what order they're going to play in, but I'll just kind of give some background on all four of them. Uh, all of them are songs that I very much enjoy singing. I'm very familiar with all four of them, and they are very dear to my heart. Uh, one of them is an English aria from uh, Samuel Barber's Vanessa. Um, and it's actually not the one that most folks probably would think that I'd be singing, because there's the outside this house aria that's typical in the right. tenor repertoire. But the one that I, and I've done that one, but the one that I actually will be presenting is uh, his next aria, which comes later in the show, uh, On the Path to the Lake, um, a lot, a lot darker than in, in material than uh, the outside this house aria, you know, the outside this house being one where he's literally like proposing to her. And in this one, um, just to kind of give a little bit of context as to, because I don't know how many people have gotten the chance to see this show or listen to this aria. Uh, Erica, who's one of the characters in the show, I just found her because she had run out the door from a party that was happening at this estate. And uh, when I say run out the door, it's New Year's Eve and it's freezing cold outside. You know, the snow's coming down, everything like that. And when I find her, she's near death. She's unconscious. Uh, I'm able to bring her back to her home. And uh, once I bring her back is when I actually sing this aria on the path to the lake, where I am describing to Vanessa the, the physical state in which I found her. I mean, from details ranging from the, her clothes that were damp with blood and her skin that was opaque from just from the sheer cold weather. Um, so, you know, not exactly as peppy as the first right. aria, but what, I, but what I love about this is as, as dark as that material is, it's just such a true testament to Samuel Barber's style of being able to, to take that darkness but maintain something so beautiful because there's so many motifs that show up from that aria, from the first aria that show up in the second aria. And the beauty, the beauty is just maintained, but you can obviously hear that dark element happening. Um, the other two, uh, two other songs that I'll have on there is two Neapolitan art songs. One is Occhi di Fata by Luigi Densa and Avukella by Francesco Paolo Tosti. Uh, both of them are very popular songs, very beautiful songs. I mean, typical tenor, you know, Neapolitan art songs. So I love that stuff. It's just gushy. Yeah. And uh, the fourth song that I'll be showing is uh, Maria from West Side Story. I mean, I doubt a piece like that needs an introduction, but I mean, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. I always have such an amazing time singing that piece. Uh, I look for any excuse to do it. So, uh, yeah, I hope That's everybody awesome. enjoys uh, what I have to present. We're looking forward to it. Let's go to your performance. Thank you so much for joining us, Seneca. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Si, tutti 
tenere la fucchiella dopo poco poco rillo a passo a tella
Thank you so much, Seneca, uh, for a beautiful performance uh, today. We are super excited to be entering uh, a, our sixth hour of our Ariathon. We have two hours to go, and um, we um, have been having a great success with um, donations, and we want to encourage people to continue to donate every dollar counts and we have received small donations medium-sized donations larger donations uh, and all of them are so powerful uh, because they're saying thank you to the artists that are performing today and uh, they're hopefully going to go to um, all of them and it will be a large amount of money that we raise today um, I wanted to mention to please take the time to discover a little bit more about Opera Steamboat by going to our website, operasteamboat.org. You can also check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and also you can come and enjoy our YouTube channel uh, and see some of the videos uh, that we have uh, from previous performances. Uh, we are going to connect with Kira del Zesura um, uh, right now. Uh, Kira actually was supposed to sing our composer this summer uh, in our production of Ariadne Naf Naxos. Um, so hopefully she com she'll come back in 2022 and dazzle us with her beautiful instrument. How are you doing, Kira? I'm great. How are you? We're on hour six now of uh, I <laughs> know. music. I am ready. I, I need to start. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Uh, Where are we? Continue to stretch and ke keep uh, limber. Um, having lots of coffee to stay awake and, uh, and be able to enjoy the performances. Uh, it is kind of on the, on the producing side. It's kind of interesting to be. You have you know 15 minutes to go accomplish other things while you're listening on earpiece to go to the restroom or to grab a bite, uh, um, uh, something to eat or a cup of coffee. So. 
But uh, how are you doing? Yeah. I'm great. You're doing great. I'm wonderful. I'm in sunny Albuquerque right now on a little trip. Nice. <laughs> it's beautiful. Wonderful. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, the performances that we're going to hear today. Yeah, of course. So I have four arias for you guys today. Um, the first one is Violin Aria. It's Niklaus's aria from Tales of Hoffman by Offenbach. Um, Niklaus is singing to his friend about love and poetry and trying to get him out of a slump that he's in. Uh, the second piece is one of Carabino's arias uh, from Marriage of Figaro by Mozart. It's Non So Q, uh, another pants roll. I love singing pants rolls, uh, so I have a few on the list today. Um, <laughs> Carabino is in love or in lust with a lot of women and he's coming of age and he's trying to figure it all out. Um, we have a lot in common, I would say. So happy pride, everyone. <laughs> Yay, happy pride. <laughs> Um, and the third piece that you're going to hear, it had to throw a lady in there. So this is Erica's aria, Must the Winter, from Vanessa by Barber. Um, she's stuck in her house, um, realizing that her aunt's a little hoo-hoo. And uh, she's realizing that the winter is literally and figuratively on its way. Um, and I related to this in a way that I hadn't quite before being in quarantine. <laughs> um, you don't know what day it is. <laughs> can't go outside so I felt that on a real level this time um and the last piece I have for everyone is Prince Orlovsky's aria from Theta Mouse to something fun to end the set with uh this is his party he's laying some ground rules and if you're at home it's around happy hour so if you have a drink please drink along with him um, he <laughs> wants you all to have a wonderful time <laughs> that is wonderful uh I'm, I'm looking forward to that and uh, since you mentioned it, let's let's do formally celebrate the fact that it's, it's June and it's Pride Month. Uh, so to all of you out there in the GLBTQ plus community, I want to say happy Pride to all of you. And thank you for joining us today as we sing for eight hours and also celebrate Pride all over the country. Um, so th thanks for mentioning that. It's important. Yes, happy and, uh, Pride. <laughs> Happy Pride, absolutely. Um, so I think we will go to the recordings now, as long as Ben gives me the thumbs up, we'll go to hear you uh, and your beautiful performance. Thanks for joining us, Kira. Thank you, guys.
Kira, thank you so much for that incredible performance. Uh, I remember the first time I conducted um, uh, Die Flittermaus at Carnegie Mellon University uh, with incredible cast of singers, people that are performing all over the world uh, now. Um, difficult show, absolutely difficult show. And it's one of those shows that the more uh, things that you add at the party scene, if you add extra arias, or uh, at the end in the prison, if you add extra arias or extra dialogue, it can become a long show. It's a, it's a big sing for everybody, uh, especially for Rosalinda. Um, but um, we are excited to, um, again, mention a couple of things. You know, feel free to come to our website and learn more about Opera Steamboat. Uh, learn about things that we received this year. We, we received the National Endowment for the Arts Award um, uh, for the first time in the history of the organization. So we're super proud to announce that. The announcement came out um, this week on June 10th, um, midweek. And so we're proud to announce that, that we received funding from the National Endowment for the Arts. We're proud also to talk about the fact that we received funding from Opera America for uh, our new commission with Rachel Peters and Liana Kirchhoff. They're writing an opera about Cookie Lockhart, uh, who is the first woman to be inducted into the Auctioneers Hall of Fame. It's awesome. The first time I actually heard Cookie, who is a, a Steamboat Springs celebrity, the first time I heard Cookie, uh, it was in an auction. And she started, in, she started auctioneering, and I was like, wow, this would be so compelling as an aria. And so uh, I can't wait to hear the auctioneering aria that Liana and Rachel are crafting for the role of Cookie Lockhart in the opera. So we're super excited to be able to do the uh, workshop this September. It will be an entirely online workshop and we will do a final uh, sort of read through uh, for the public. But uh, for more details, check out our website later this month. Um, we are excited to be able to do that workshop this year and then the full production in 2021 uh, that will be presented as part of our program uh, next summer. So I hope that you will join us uh, for the workshop this September and for the full production next August in 2021. Um, we are going to go to live to talk to Bridget Skaggs. Hi, Bridget. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Andres? It's great to see you. You're here in Chicago. I am. I'm in Chicago here. Um, you know, I live right in between the Metra and the CTA, so you might hear a train go by in the background. Just part of the charm of living in the city. <laughs> Absolutely. I was surprised that none of my dogs have barked or made a noise in the last seven hours. So you call me? I, I can't I can't really complain, but uh, you know, I now I said it out loud and they'll probably start barking. But uh, um, Bridget, tell us a little bit about what you have been doing um, and also a little bit about the pieces that you are singing today. Absolutely. Uh, first, I want to say thank you so much, Andres and Ben, for all of the coordination that you've done today. I've been tuning in throughout the day, and it's really incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it's a wonderful community. Uh, I was out in Steamboat Springs in 2018 singing Coming Little Vixen, and since then, I've um, continued to perform in Chicago, 
in Baroque operas and with a local company called Chicago Fringe Opera doing mostly contemporary American works. And I sing a lot of art song and vocal recitals. Um, so you'll see some of that in the choices that I made for my set for today. Uh, I started with one of my favorite operetta arias to sing. So this first piece is from uh, Marta, which is a German operetta by Flotow. And in this piece, uh, two noble women have disguised themselves as country maidens and gone into the countryside and get hired to work on a farm. Hmm. And of course, hijinks ensue and they fall in love with the farmers. <laughs> And in this piece uh, that I open with, you'll hear the character Nancy. She opens and the piece is in a minor key. And she says, why do I feel such angst? Why do I feel such anxiety? <laughs> and then the piano moves into a major key and she realizes it's because she's in love. Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> That's why I'm doing all of this sighing. That's why I feel such anxiety. It's because when one key. is in love for the first time, that's how you feel. Um, and then after that, a opera favorite, the Carmen Segadilla. Uh, and directly after that, a piece that many people may not be familiar with from Bernard Herrmann's opera, Wuthering Heights. Oh, yes. I love so it. if you've never heard of this piece, it's, um, it's probably because it's been very rarely performed. But you might have heard of Bernard Herrmann, who scored many of Alfred Hitchcock's films. So he wrote the music to Vertigo, North by Northwest, Psycho. Um, and this piece really lends itself to his kind of musical language because in this aria, Kathy has a dream and she dreams that she goes to heaven, but that she hates being in heaven. Everything is strange. All she wants to do is go back to Wuthering Heights and the angels throw her back to Wuthering Heights and then everything is right in the world. <laughs> And it's by a the beautiful way, piece. A side note: uh, any anyone out there, pianists who are having to sight read that piece, go check it out because it's not it's not difficult to play. It's difficult to sight read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to be counting your duples and triples yeah. for sure. <laughs> um, there's actually a wonderful recording by um, Renee Fleming. She recorded this aria on an album, and it's a piece that can be sung either by mezzo or soprano. Mm -hmm. um, Directly after that, you'll hear an art song by Rossini, La Regata Veneziana. Ooh. And I do a little intro in the video, so I won't ruin that now. Um, but I conclude with one of my favorite things to sing, which is good old fashioned Rodgers and Hammerstein musical theater. Um, that's That was like my first love as a singer was these this golden era musical theater music. Um, so I sing Climb Every Mountain. And I think at you know, at this point in the world, we all have our own struggles and we're all turning to music to feel that healing balm of music. And, and this song is really just like rolling yourself up in a warm, fuzzy blanket. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we're looking forward to um, your performance and we want to thank you for being part of this. Uh, it's such a wonderful opportunity for everybody to gather and create some sense of community and bonding through many hours, you know, we, we if we decided to do it for one hour, many people wouldn't have had the chance to enjoy uh, the performances. Uh, but um, we have had received nothing but amazing feedback so far from all of the people that have been enjoying the performances. We want to continue to encourage people to donate. Uh, we are um, reaching our um, part of our goal, but we hope that, you know, if you had a chance to donate that you can chance to, to take another chance again and come back and donate again for um, our organization and for our singers. Uh, without further ado, we're gonna go to the performance. Uh, thank you, Bridget, for being part of this. Thank you, Andres. Thank you, Opera Steamboat. Bye.
before we perform this next song, I wanted to take a moment to note that although it is written by a composer that is familiar to many of us who love opera, Rossini, that this song is actually excerpted from a song cycle. In the song cycle, a young woman, Anne Soleta, watches as her beloved, Momolo, competes in a regatta race. She desperately wants him to win, and I'll leave it up to you to decide, based on the ending of the song, if he wins or not. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
much offer Steamboat. Have a lovely rest of your evening. <laughs>
Uh, the second piece that I'll be doing is uh, she called him Kurt from Jake Heggie's Three Decembers. Yes. Um, so my character's name is, yeah, it's a wonderful aria. My character is Charlie. And um, Charlie has just received a letter from his mom and uh, for Christmas. And his mom says at the end of the letter, um, say hello to Kurt for me. But Bert. Charlie's partner's name is Bert with a B. Um, and the issue is Charlie's been with his partner for five years. And his mom knows who Bert is. And, you know, they've met, he says in the aria, uh, 900 times. Um, so he's very upset. He, the aria, he struggles uh, the relationship that he has with his mom and that his mom still doesn't accept him uh, and Bert. Furthermore, uh, Bert is dying at this time as well. This is during the AIDS crisis. Um, so it's a very emotional aria. And Jake Heggie um, does it very beautifully, just like he does with all of his operas and art songs, um, the beautiful vocal lines. Um, so it's a very, uh, it's a treat for me to sing that today. And then awesome. the third aria I'm doing is a Spanish, uh, Spanish aria from Maravilla by Federico Torroba, and it's uh, Amor Vida de Mi Vida, which means uh, love, life of my life. Um, so my character, Rafael, uh, he is uh, in love with Elvira, but Elvira has decided that she is going to be with another man. So in this aria, um, I am pining over Elvira, and I can't believe that she's leaving me, so now I have to say goodbye to her. And it's so it's so beautiful. I know you know we don't do a lot of Spanish opera in America, so it'll be a treat for those that maybe haven't heard any Spanish opera. It's a it's a favorite of mine. Very gorgeous music, um, very similar to Puccini, um, and it's it's very beautiful. So I hope you enjoy that as well. And then the last piece I'll be doing is Non Damo Piu, which is an art song by Paolo Tosti. Uh, very similar actually in theme. It's uh, it means I love you no longer. Pretty much the same thing. It's about a guy that. Um, that has now, uh, uh, love has left him. So now he's saying, well, I love you no longer because you've left me, you've hurt me. Um, mm -hmm. But the vocal line really shows that the character still loves her very much. Um, so it's very deceptive in that where he says, I love you no longer, but of course he still does. Um, so that's what I'll be singing today. And I just want to say thank you, Andres. Uh, thank you, Ben. Thank you, Opera Steamboat. Uh, just like Andres said, um, uh, he's really helped the artists um, here today, because yeah, contracts have been canceled. Some of us don't know when things are gonna come back. Um, so it's really nice and thank you for having this here. Um, so those of you watching, please consider donating if you have not yet. Um, yeah, so this, this is a treat for all us performers. So thank you again. Es un placer, Armando. Uh, muchas gracias. And we will go to uh, your performance. Great, thanks. Hi, Chuck. La causa, cosa sento? In qual laccio io cadea? Perfidi, io voglio, io voglio tal modo punirmi. A piacermi la sentenza sarà. Se i pagasse la vecchia prendente, pagarla in qual maniera? E povero Antonio che la incognito figa ricusa di dare una nipote in matrimonio. Coltivando l'orgoglio di questo mentecatto. Tutto ciò da un raggino Il corpo è il fatto Vedrò mentrino sospiro Felice un servo mio Che in pandesio di possedendo bra vedrò per mandamore unito un vile oggetto che in me resta un affetto che 
I'm not going away. Tell Mom, Bert isn't going away. Adios. Saber que no puedes llorar, amor, vida de mi vida, que triste es decirse adiós, te llevas la juventud, es no Pensar que te amé con alma vida, yo te quiero volar de mi dolor. Este amor que soñé no lo puedo callar. Fueron falsas palabras, mentices mil veces. Tu amor muer, amor vida de mi vida. Es decirse adiós, te llevas la juventud, es no querer sin relación, amor, puedo en el camino, no puedes volver atrás. Cuando sientes deseos de llorar, adiós mi bien, oh, adiós. Recordian cuore. Che ci incontrammo, le tue promesse le ricordi ancora. Folle l'amor io ti seguirci, oh mamma, e accanto a te sognai folle d'amor. Sognai felice di carezze a baci, una catena degli guanta in cielo, ma le parole tue furono menaci perché l'anima tua fatta di gel. Te ne ricordi ancor, te ne ricordi ancor, or la mia fede, Oh
incontrammo il mio sogno d'amor non sei più tu i tuoi baci non cerco a te non penso sogno in altro ideal non t'amo più insieme io cosparsi di fiori o tuoi sentier tu fossi di del mio cor l'unica speme tu della mente l'unico pensier tu m'hai visto pregare impallidire piangere tu m'hai visto io non so in te io so me un appagare tue furon menaci avreo dato mio sangue la mia fe te ne ricordi ancor te ne ricordi ancor or la mia fe del di che ci incontrammo Sogno d'amor, no sei più tu, i tuoi baci non cerco, a te non penso, sogno in altro ideal, non t'amo più. so excited to be entering our final hour of our Ariathon. So for those of you who have been waiting all day, all eight hours to donate, this is your chance. This is our final hour. Let's make our final hour uh, the biggest donating hour in the entire Ariathon. Um, we are going to um, just mention a couple of things. You know, check out our website, operasimbo.org. Uh, to donate to our artists that are performing today, to get to know more about our opera company, what we do, who we are. Uh, you can also uh, always reach out to us if you're interested in becoming a board member, if you're interested in donating to the organization itself for any of our scholarship funds for our summer program, for our opera in the schools, outreach, education, some of the... Um, community seminars that we do uh, with um, some of our retirement homes around town. We have such incredible programming, um, bringing music out into the community in Route County. Uh, a lot of the time it's really hard to find um, foundations that are focusing in uh, rural Colorado. A lot of the foundations want to focus on um, the cities. Uh, main cities, but uh, don't don't forget us in rural Colorado. We are doing some amazing work. Uh, we are going to connect now with Raquel Duval, uh, Rachel Duval. It's uh, it's great to see you and hear you. How are you? Hello, hola, cómo estás? Estoy muy bien. I'm very good. It's so good to see you. It's great to see you too. I was gonna say let's keep going in Spanish, but uh, we, we might have some but, You know, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, Rachel, how 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 you been? What do you have been doing? I've been good. I've uh, I've you know, like everybody, had stuff canceled. I would have just wrapped Hansel with City Lyric Opera here in New York. Um, my first Hansel. I know. I was so excited about it. Yeah. Um, I know. And I was producing, I work for Opera on Tap, the national chapter here in New York. I produce for them. And we, I would have been producing our outreach program, the Playground Opera, right now, which is an amazing outreach program where we do an opera with the kids on their playground and they're in it. Oh, it's, it's amazing. That's wonderful. Um, but we just got word last week that we got a grant to do it virtually. Oh, Great. So now I'm in full tilt mode trying to figure out how that's going to work, uh, which is really exciting. Right. Um, yeah. If uh, if you have any questions, I'm sure Ben Gully has great. I know. Ben, uh, I might hit but, you up. I'm not, yes. not joking. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's great because it forces all of us actually to be innovative and to think outside the box and say, yes, OK, exactly. so. You know, go how is it go back to school? Yeah. yeah but um, <laughs> what is it like to perform for a camera? What is it like to have access and how do I act? You know, yeah. all of the things that a lot of actors work, you know, uh, working with a camera, but um, opera singers don't really get a chance to develop that skill. So um, yeah. we, we need to definitely adjust and, you know, no, it's how true. And, and I think I, I wallowed a little bit the first few weeks of all of this. And I was sad, like everybody. And I went through my own grief process. And then I got asked to do a live stream on a, a friend's cabaret Facebook group. And I'd been ruminating on this show that I was writing for many years that bridges. I used to be a performance poet. I did a lot of slam poetry. I was performing at a very high level. I toured internationally. I was actually on the Spanish national slam team, but I wow. couldn't compete because I was pregnant because I got pregnant. <laughs> Not because of them, because I, <laughs> they weren't like discriminating or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they, so anyway, I wrote this show that bridges performance poetry and opera and classical singing. Um, and it, I've been working on it for a long time and I was going to do a workshop in May. And so I, I wrote it in a week. I finished this show in wow. a week and I performed it in my room here. And it was, it was so challenging, but also so rewarding because of exactly what you say, because we're pushing ourselves to be more creative, be differently creative. And yep. it's been very gratifying. Awesome. It's so great to see you and hear you. Oh, you um, too. Um, what are you performing for us today? So I, in typical me fashion, went the, the less common route. There are no car commercial <laughs> arias here. <laughs> no, no, no Carmen's. No, Carmen, no. So I'm starting actually with Tosti. Uh, the, what was his name before me? Alejandro, was it? Um, yeah, Armando. Armando, perdona. Armando also sang some Tosti. I was so excited. So I'm going to sing Ideale by Tosti. And then I have um, a new, very new piece by a New York composer named Kamala Sankaram, who is phenomenal. If you don't know her, look her up. She's incredible. She wrote the world's first Zoom opera that premiered yeah. um, about a month ago. Yeah, she's incredible. So I'm singing a piece of hers from her opera called Looking at You, which is about tech and stuff. I think I introduced it in my video, so I won't say awesome. too much. And then I'm going to do an art song by Von Williams called Hands, Eyes, Heart, which is just sweet. It's from his four last songs, very short and lovely. And then I've been very fortunate the last few years to be specializing more in Baroque music. So I'm going to end with Crude Furie from Cersei by Handel. Yes, lots of coloraturas yes. and interpolated <laughs> high notes. I love it. I love how you perform that show, that, oh, that piece, because it's, it's just the right energy. Uh, oh, it's so good. And well, but it was weird doing it with a camera right here. So, well, I'll be curious to get your thoughts. <laughs> With a lot of big eyes. <laughs> I know. It's like, uh, remember to stay away from being too close. Exactly. Uh, but um, it's so great to see you. It's so you wonderful too. to hear you. Um, you are just an incredible performer. And um, our, our audiences, of course, remember you from your performance in Florencia del Amazonas, uh, which was amazing to do. Um, we are looking forward to um, getting the 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 let's yeah, yeah. keep going uh from from ben so we're gonna go to Never. your performances <laughs> and enjoy them thank you so much for being part of our audience nos vemos nos vemos chao hasta luego chao
Hello, Opera Steamboat fans! My name is Rachel Duval and I'm a mezzo-soprano. I'm very, very happy to be with you here today. I'm going to start off my set with one of my all-time favorite art songs. This is called Ideale by Paolo Tosti. Thank you, thank you. I love that piece, it's so yummy. Um, this next piece is something completely different. This is from an opera by a New York composer named Kamala Sankaram, uh, who's doing pretty incredible, innovative stuff right now going on in the opera world. She recently wrote the first opera for Zoom that premiered back in April. Uh, she also wrote the world's first virtual reality opera, The Parksville Murders, that was commissioned by Samsung and Opera on Tap. So she's kind of amazing. Um, this piece that I'm going to sing is called All I Have to Do, and it's from her opera Looking at You. And at this point in the story, my character is the chief technology officer at uh, 
big tech company, think, you know, Facebook, kind of Twitter, Instagram, whatever. And she has just gotten this job. They've told her all this stuff about what she needs to do for her job. And she sings this aria to us in the audience. And um, it's fairly special. So I hope you enjoy it. I really love this piece. This is all I have to do. It's from his last song cycle, Four Last Songs, uh, that he was composing when he died. And the poetry for this whole song cycle is by his wife, Ursula, who was quite a phenomenal poet in her own right. And I've just always loved this piece. The poetry goes like this. Hands, give him all the measure of my love, surer than any word. Eyes. Be deep pools of truth, where he may see a thought more whole than constancy. Heart, in his keeping, be at rest and live, as music and silence meet, and both are heard.
I want to introduce somebody really important to this show, and that is the incredible Alexander Rovang, who is my phenomenal pianist today. Uh, and I just want to acknowledge him. He does a lot of work on Broadway. He does a lot of work doing weird contemporary new opera, which is clearly why I know him. It would mean the world to me if you could give today. If you don't have a lot of money, even five or ten dollars goes a huge way. It means so much to me and all the other artists who are on today. So please consider donating to Opera Steamboat and to all of these incredible incredible Opera Steamboat alumni who have given their time today. So without further ado, I'm going to sing my last piece. Uh, I've been very fortunate over the years, to, the last few years, to be specializing a lot more in Baroque music. I, I would have been at American Bach Soloists this summer, which I was really excited about. Uh, but instead, I've been singing a lot of Bach and Handel in my room! Um, so I hope that you enjoy this. This is one of my all-time favorite arias to sing. This is Crude Fourier from Handel's Circe.
Thank you so much, uh, Rachel. It's so incredible to be able to hear you again. Um, we we put a lot of our Spanish Spanish speakers at the end of our program. Armando, Raquel, now Jessica. Uh, we are so excited to welcome our next artist, Jessica. Uh, how are you? Hey, how are you? It's so good to see to, you. Yeah, <laughs> un placer verte. Uh, where are you? Uh, I'm in my house. Actually, I made my makeshift studio here in my living room yeah. in um, Los Angeles. So that's where I am. <laughs> fabulous. Fabulous. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you have been doing. Sure. So um, since, you know, the pandemic started and we were forced to be at home with everything, um, I have jumped on quite a few virtual projects. So I did, I've, I participated in a few of um, virtual choirs, which has been really fun, keeping up my my choral chops with that. Um, so that's been really exciting. Yeah, yeah. So that's been really, really fun and getting to collaborate with people who actually I probably wouldn't get to collaborate with because they're not local. You know, it's been international artists. So that's been really fun. Um, and then I've been participating in some relief concerts as well with local organizations. Also, you know, raising money for singers, which is really, really wonderful for, that they're um, that doing that at this time. And then just working on my own repertoire and roles and things that I now have time to really to really work on. So, right. yeah. <laughs> for all of our um, our Steamboat audiences or anybody who came to Steamboat to um, our summer festival last year, uh, Jessica uh, was Frida Kahlo in our production, uh, Frida by Robert Xavier Rodriguez. Uh, we are so happy to have you here as part of our Ariathon. Uh, you were such a compelling artist and such a beautiful performance um, with great yeah. integrity and honesty of the character of uh, Frida Kahlo. So thank you for that beautiful performance. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Yeah, it was absolutely wonderful. You know, being a Latina, growing up with Frida in my life, I mean, since I was a child, I knew who she was. And, you know, my mom and my, and my dad would have her artwork in the house um, or images of her. So getting to actually portray her was really 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 a thrill so thank you <laughs> yeah it's uh well it's a it's a it's not an easy piece it's a difficult piece no, especially no. for for the person playing frida is you you never leave stage you're on every <laughs> scene um and uh it's a challenge uh the costume yes. changes and all of the movements in so many aspects of her life is a challenge to perform uh i yes. believe that you will per be performing part of uh that show uh, for us tell us a little bit about what you're going to sing Sure. So I'm going to be singing Frida's uh, most famous aria from this show, which is called Death Dances Around My Bed. And it happens in the moment after her um, accident where, I mean, she's lucky she sur even survived, yeah. let alone was able to walk and be able-bodied. Um, it was a very, very traumatic event, but also a very pivotal event in her life where she really felt like death was coming for her. She, she wasn't sure she was going to live at this point. Mm. And Despite that, she was also simultaneously making the decision that art and the pursuit of being an artist was really going to be her life's, right. you know, life's work. Um, and so it's just a really poignant moment in the show and such a beautiful moment um, to see this real change uh, where you see Frida becoming really the Frida we, that we all know and are familiar with today. So that's Absolutely. the piece that I will be singing. Yes. What else will you be singing? <laughs> Um, I'm also going to be singing uh, Oh Those Spacers from Minotis the Council. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> so that's a wonderful politically, uh, you know, charged, poignant piece, too, um, that the mm -hmm. ca character of the secretary sings in that. Um, and then I call it Mezzo's Greatest Hits. I will also be singing the Segedia. <laughs> I know. I kind of love it. I was like, oh, so many versions of Carmen. I was like, I know. this is great. I know. You have to. It's the only time where you really get to be sexy, you know? Come yeah, on. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'll be singing Segedia, which is really fun. And then I'm going to be um, ending with Vidu Vars from mm -hmm. Richard Strauss's The Rosen Cavalier, which Octavian is a dream role of mine. And it's just an absolute pleasure to get to sing that music. It's just, I just love it every time. Absolutely. So beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Jessica, thank you so much uh, for being part of our Ariathon. Muchas gracias uh, por ser parte sí, de de nada, Ariathon. Gracias a ti. Thank uh, you. Well, we'll <laughs> go to your performance and uh, enjoy um, Death Dances Around My Bed at Night uh, from the opera Frida <laughs> by Robert Xavier Rodriguez. Thank you so much, Jessica. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> I was once full of life, dancing in a world of hidden colors. Now my steps are slow and painful. Short of crimson glass, death dances around my bed at night. Gold speckled red sun. Flesh, my friends become women slowly. I'm old in an instant. My faithful companion, the darkness, its shadow caresses my hair. Remember, we were to climb a Himalayas. Don't touch the sun without me. shattered like this. Tell me something no mi amor. Dime que me quieres para siempre. Para siempre. Today still goes on. I feel the wind of my faithful Verona. What is ahead of me? Do my life once again you be complete? When I look in a mirror, one free that looks out. One freedom of sin. I'll wear a mask to cover my pain. I'll live my life upside down. Death dances round my bed at night, but I refuse to cry. Do the dances now on my bed at night, but I refuse to die. The freedoms I see in these faces from the world when I lie here. Pushes in to paint the color of my heart. I'll create the Frida I want to be. What I What I
It's, it's so great to hear you, Jessica. Thank you so much for being part of our Ariathon today. Um, we want to make sure that we finish strong for our last performer. Uh, lots of people signing in now. Uh, remember to continue to donate through the end of the program. Um, and I believe uh, donations will be open the rest of the evening. Uh, so you can continue to um, donate to these fabulous young artists that are performing these uh, wonderful singers that are all over the country. Um, we want to make sure that you are aware our, our, re, our donation list is right there. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can donate uh, directly from there or go to our website, operasteamboat.org and uh, search for Ariathon. And there's a button there to donate uh, to all of our artists, 100% of the money that we are raising uh, today during our eight hour Ariathon goes to the singers participating in it. And we wouldn't have it any other ways. But um, uh, let's introduce our final singer. Uh, nothing like finishing with baritone Charles Eaton. Hi, Charles. Hi, Andres, how are you? It's great to hear you. It's great to see you. How are you doing? I'm hanging in. I hope you had a break today from standing there all day because uh, it's been a long no. one. <laughs> no, I haven't. Uh, <laughs> well, right after right this. There, the, yeah, Ray's I sitting, wish I could stand. <laughs> yeah, Ben is sitting in the computer working. Uh, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. A lot of caffeine has. has been consumed. Incredible singing all around. I, it's been so fun to watch everybody today and see some old colleagues and everything. So thank you again for setting this up. Yeah, no, it's great. Tell us a little bit about what you have been doing Um uh, you know, through the quarantine. Sure. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm from Soros, Connecticut, first of all, and that's where I am now. Uh, I was based in New York city prior to this. And of course, just doing the audition grind. And I had some gigs. I was uh, lucky enough to go to France with the glimmer glass festival in December. Um, and then, you know, I had some cancellations because of this. So, uh, this is so incredibly helpful and generous for, from Opera Steamboat and from all the donors. It's so incredibly appreciated. So thank you again. Thank you. Um, uh, it's our pleasure to do that. You know, we're, we are a small company, but we try to be inventive, innovative, to try to do new things, especially for, uh, um, you know, so many stories from different artists that ha I have worked with in the past that have been part of our organization. Uh, and uh, how many people have had gigs canceled and uh, the yeah. ability to raise a little bit of money to help. But not only that, but bring awareness and bring 
uh, your performances to our audiences. So uh, tell us a little bit about what we are going to hear from you today. Sure. So I have three of sort of my favorites. Um, I am starting with Billy Budd's aria from Billy Budd called Look Through the Port. Uh, Billy is a sailor on the HMS Pinafore. He was impressed onto the sailboat, um, and he has just been sentenced to death uh, for the killing of the master at arms, Claggart, uh, essentially in self-defense. Um, and in this aria, he is in prison below the deck. He's awaiting his sentence the next morning, and he's awakened by the moonlight coming through the port. Uh, the second piece I'm singing is De Vieni alla Finestra from Don Giovanni. It's, uh, of course, Don Giovanni attempting to woo Donna Alviera's maid, uh, and so he sings her a song in an attempt to get her to come down from her window. And finally, I'm singing a piece called Soliloquy from Roger, Rogers and Hammerstein's The Carousel. Awesome. Billy, the character, has just found out that he's going to be a father. And so the piece is sort of his journey of uh, in his mind uh, as he considers what parenting will be like. That's great. It, it's, a, it's a fantastic piece of music. It, it's, a, it's, a tough, it's a tough sing because it goes for a while. And it's, it's always... Uh, I remember I sang that, um, I think, my senior year in college. and uh, Undoubtedly beautifully. Well, n n no, because I, <laughs> I, I still sounded nothing like the character. I <laughs> and I was, people were like, why are you singing that? Um, <laughs> uh, but, um, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a beautiful piece. But the challenge, actually, for me was always memorizing it. Um, oh, my gosh. There's a lot of different words that are said over and over again. And... Right, and you're like, which one yeah. is this? Which version is this? Um, my little girl, and you're like, which one? Pink is white, which, which Yeah, one is it's it? a lot, it's a lot of words. <laughs> it's always a challenge. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's go to uh, Charles' uh, performance. Uh, this is our final performance, so I hope that all of your friends uh, and everybody uh, can donate. You wanted to say one more thing. Just one more thing, I just wanted to uh, have a huge shout out for Brendan Shapiro, who's the pianist in this. Uh, collaborative pianists have been thrown another curveball in this uh, pandemic. So the fact that he's virtually able to follow me by re-recording and listening to what I'm doing and then recording from there, I just appreciate all of you collaborative pianists so much. So thank you and thank you to all the donors again. Uh, thank you. And to you guys. Oh, our pleasure. Thank you for being part of it. Uh, and you are correct, being a pianist and trying to you know, follow the 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 fluctuation of time there. It, it's yeah. it's just it's just a challenge. It's 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 a challenge to be able to music to do music this way. But we um, would not be able to do it without you. So yeah, yeah. So um, thank you so much, Brandon, for being part of it, and all of the other pianists that were part of uh, our Ariathon today. We couldn't do this without you. Um, thank you so much, Andres. So I'm thanking myself because I played for Brandon. <laughs> That's uh, right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's you. go to um, yeah, our final performance of our Ariathon. Again, you can continue to donate. Uh, um, we will announce our total once we have calculated all the donations. There have been many, many, many donations, and I know that uh, those of you who haven't donated yet will donate as we close. Uh, thank you, Charles, so much, and thank let's you. go to your performance. Bye, everyone. Oh, <laughs> 
memories about that already i was singing with you i was like darn that's a good ending to that song um <clears throat> we want to take the time <laughs> you transition. lost your voice yeah i know i lost my voice yeah. uh I, I that's a great a great piece to finish uh the program um we want to thank everybody who participated today all 24 singers all of our pianists uh that were part of this project uh we couldn't have done it without you uh, for all of our singers, we couldn't have done it without you. Thank you so much for being part of this. I hope that people will continue to donate because we want to make sure that every single penny, 100% of those uh, funds raised today go to all of you. Um, we, uh, this is a great opportunity to spread a little kindness, to spread uh, support, extend a hand, uh, and uh, be able to raise some funds for um, many artists who are struggling to make ends meet. So I hope that you will continue to support us, support these artists, continue to donate. Our link is right here. Oh, the other way, right here. You can continue to donate. Um, and again, 100% of those funds will go to the singers who participated in an aria fund today. The first one, Hopefully the first one of many, Ariathon 2020. We want to thank uh, our entire board of directors, uh, in particular, uh, Jenny Maxwell, uh, Melissa Hampton, and Jack Dysart. Uh, and we also want to take the time right now to officially, officially thank Ben Golly, our, our executive producer, <laughs> uh, who has been here. So. A uh, huge applause to Bravi Ben. Duty. Bravi we, duty. we couldn't have done it without you. Literally, we couldn't have done it with you. No, you. you are a special human being. So no, you. all of you out there with casting powers, this this young man <laughs> needs to get hired and be singing all over the world. Once but I get paid, I can tip you for saying that. <laughs> I'll, I'll take a cut. Right. Uh, but uh, thank you so much, everybody, for an incredible eight hours of performances. 
donate, 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 and stay in touch with Upper Steamboat as we continue our plans for 2020 and we look forward towards the future uh, with our organization. Thank you so much. Sending you lots of love and peace to all of you. And thank you for joining us. Thanks. Have a good night.